Antarctica is Australia. Australia means a southerly region, a southerly direction. South is everywhere opposite the magnetic north. All areas going outwards is south. Australia surrounds us. The suddenly southerly direction surrounds us, my night. And we're just talking Australians. You're connected to Australia's. Australia's connected to Antarctica's connected to you. Terra de Fuego. Welcome to the 97th investigation of Press the Child. Hey, let's go, man. We popping off. In the late 2013, it was reported in the media that a famous Western Australian geologist, Philip Playford, has found evidence that Western Australia had been hit by tsunamis in the past. A few, a number of years ago, I came to the understanding that Western Australia once had a Caucasian white civilization. Oh, that's cute. That's real cute, man. He's going to slide yourself into our history again. He's going to slide yourself on in. And then going to put in parentheses, Egyptian, Israelite, Phoenician. Come on, man. Hey, cut out the malarkey, man. Always trying to write yourself in history. Always trying to write yourself into antiquity. We can't talk Romani without you talking Roman. We can't talk Hebrew without you talking Jew. And now we can't talk Egyptian, Israelite, or Phoenician without you talking Caucasian. We're talking Asian. <laughs> it's all good, man. I mean, white means pure, right? White means pure. Maybe that's what they're saying, that there's a pure civilization that's connected with these Egyptians and Israelites slash Phoenicians and all these are mixtures of different tribes, of course. It's a more and more war. I mean, Egyptian, Israelite, Phoenician pretty much sums up the more and more war. I mean, with permission from the Pharaoh, do they migrate? But let's dodge our own hijacks. Ty Battle taught us to do that. We are masters at the hijack dodge. You know what I'm saying? So he's saying a number of years ago, he came to the understanding that Western Australia had a pure civilization, <laughs> Israelite, Phoenician, and the population dwelt mainly in cities on the coast. These cities are now under the water. They just found some uh, Naga cities underwater in Louisiana. Go get that on our IG, man. The, the disasters occurred around 14. I mean, look at these days. The disasters occurred around 1400 to 1550 AD, right? Right when Columbus is finding you and me in India Superior, there's disasters, there's tsunamis, there's a freeze over, right? This is still around this ice age. They got cursed on this land when they came here, man. It was the coldest it's been in a thousand years at least. They got glacier lines, glaciers in America, and tsunamis. We're talking Australia. Okay, let's go. The disasters occur. <laughs> so the whole world is being played when they found you, man. Like, Hawaii was popping off. You know, it, it hurt the creator to see you have to suffer like this. This partition getting broken down. I mean, Colombo knew where he was going. Colombo know where he was going? You remember this great link from John Pierre Ruiz, St. John's University, the exegist. 
the exegesis of empire towards a post-colonial reading of Christopher Columbus's El Libro de la Profecia. We're talking book of prophecies and, you know, this always confirms it's every time we might forget that Columbus knew, he knew exactly where he was going. He had a very specific mission, my naga, you know what I'm saying? Like we got to cut out the malarkey, man. This manuscript commonly known as El Libro de la Profecy as the Book of Prophecies was compiled by Christopher Columbus himself. Was it say this is the beginning of the book or collection of authorities, authorities, sayings, opinions, and prophecies concerning the need to recover the holy city? Stop. He's not just lost looking for India. He has a need to recover Israel, the holy city, Jerusalem, and Mount Zion, in case you thought it was play, play. That's the city of David. He's searching for the Preston. And we got out that Atlantic, Atlantic Monthly Journal, Volume 104, that he's specifically searching for the great Khan. He got a letter from the Pope to give to the great Khan of China. <laughs> so, you know, we got China here. We got India Superior here. Columbus looking for Jerusalem, the Mount Zion, the holy city. That's his mission, man. And the discovery and conversion of the islands, man. This is at the crux, you know what I'm saying, of the more and more war. Who is Columbus? Was he a Moor? We heard that before. Did he accidentally uh, find America looking for India or was he searching for India superior? And if he's trying to recover the Holy City, he has to search for India superior because there's a superior Indian, the king of the Indians, the Grand Khan, David himself, Khan of Mount Zion. This is who he wants to credit himself as a prophet of Zeus <laughs> to convert Israelites. They converting Israelites, my God. Their whole thing is to convert us, to break us off from being a nation. Discovery and conversion of the islands of the Indies, man. <laughs> so he's looking for the Indies, he's looking for India Superior, Khan Khan, and you know, he finds it, man. He finds the Holy City, he finds Mount Zion. And he hijacks it for, for Ferdinand, <laughs> for Isabella, his Spanish rulers, man. This is what Columbus compiled himself. This is his mission statement to recover the holy city, to recover Israel, to conquer Israel. It should easily read my mission <laughs> is the need to conquer Israel. Israel to recover the holy city and Mount Zion and discovery and conversions of these Nagas of the Indies. Preston John, the king of the Indians, Rex Negus, to convert the people of Preston John to steal the resources forever, perpetual servitude. Papu Bull, the Papu Bull, 1452. Leads up to this, man. He's pretty much quoting right out the Papal Bull from Pope Nicholas V. Let's go, man. I'm going for drop. Go crazy, man. Caucasian. Caucasian. You need a Caucasian white civilization. It must be Egypt. It must be Israel. It must be Phoenicia, man. I think you're trying to find a place for yourselves, man. Trying to see where you fit in at. Columbus pops up around this time, right? 1400 to 1550. When the last of the Israelite tribes fled to Arabia across 
the Indian Ocean after the cataclysmic events of 1530. And again, a lot of our maps are from this, you know, period, India Superior, 1530. So what do they mean that the last of the Israelite tribes are they saying out of Australia? Okay, you know, are they talking Australia or are they talking Australia? You know what I mean? Australia. Southerly. Fuego. Is this author saying that the last of Israel in Tara Zancta, right? In Tara Zancta, Holy Land, Antarctica, Australia. That the last of them fled out of Australia or Antarctica into what he's calling Arabia. And where does he put Arabia? <laughs> because he's going to put a lot of places where you don't think they should be right here in America, right here in Asia. <laughs> so keep an open mind as we read this. We're just surfing the wave and we're trying to put our puzzle together, man. And we ain't trying to be right. We don't got to say we right about this and that. The pressure is not on us to be right, my not. The pressure's on, high, on Hijack City to keep trying to take these links down and keep trying to hide the truth. They got the pressure on them. We we wave surfing, man. We eat the walking across the sky sky. Love to five eyes. We eat the walking. We ain't even supposed to be talking about this. We in a bonus round. We on press the John and storm at 97. Man, it's a it's a victory lap, right? <laughs> we didn't think we'd get past 20. Then we said 30, and then we said 50, and then 60 for the real one net, man. We in 97. And I got so much. I don't know, my Naga. You know, I just feel like I'm just keyed in right now on this press the flow. You know, excuse me. Um, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm trying to catch up on uh, a lot since I got back from Joy World. Shout out to my fence building Nagas. We got a lot of packages to get out, a lot of a lot of packs, you know what I'm saying? A lot of great uh merch orders. So we're catching up on all this. And I just been so locked into Preston, you know what I'm saying? So I just got to get to one on in my knock, you know what I'm saying? Then I can fall back, <laughs> catch up on the website. Um, we also got the uh, the fifth wave. I was going to do it this week, but I'm like, yo, let me just get, let me just get to Preston 100 and I'm going to fall back <laughs> in the ether. And that's where we're going to be. And that's where you're going to find us exclusively at 432thedrop.com. So we're going to start, you know, migrating and spending most of our time and energy popping off right from the website because we gave YouTube all we can give them. I think Preston John, you know, uh, investigation is, um, I think it's the greatest investigation in YouTube history. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's the greatest investigation in the, in YouTube history. You know what I'm saying? I think we did that, Drop Nation. We we did the greatest investigation in the history of YouTube. But even more than that, you know what I'm saying? We've been searching for the press. They're searching for Dawi, Hosea 3, and we got a bigger meaning. You know, it's, it's beyond, you know, uh, videos. You know what I'm saying? This is us showing ourselves, studying to show ourselves approved, man, studying this out studying the language, the philology, studying the cartography, the maps, like we're doing right now. You could say, oh, okay, uh, India Superior, that, that might be a mistake. And then you see all this other correlation behind it, and it can't be a mistake. It's, it's too good to us. It feels too good. Things are lining up. Things are matching up. Timelines are getting situated. So, you know, excuse us and excuse me, my Naga, uh, you know, and I'll get back to all my Nagas on the emails and all I got emails to catch up to. I just, I've been so locked in on this investigation and should lock for that. And I, I just pray that you are um, enjoying it and that, you know, getting to press the job 100 uh, feels as good to you as it does to me. You know, it's a, it's a huge accomplishment, man. You know, we, we did a hundred, thorough investigative 
um, you know, checkpoints. You know, each one of those are a checkpoint. We got to fight to get back just to the zone, you know, to get the space and energy to pop off, you know what I'm saying, continually. So it's taken us years, man, six years to get to this point. Six years plus. So I'll praise the water, the water to you, Drop Nation. And uh, look out for it, man. Look out for it. The water for all your support. We're getting those press the pack twos out. You know what I'm saying? We're getting uh, the reconstruction packs out. Love to the cons, man. Yo, Seth and I spiral, as well as the mob packs. Uh, you know what I'm saying? All my orders coming in for those as well. So all your packs are going out. And the water for your support. And this is how you support us, man. You know what I'm saying? This is how we keep it going. If you got one press the pack, get two. For the AC over there, for the aqua over there, you got, you know, one press to pack two or to get another one for an AC over there. That's how you support us so we can get our framework popping and continue to build, because Naga's build for Naga Field. A lot of water, you know, so the water for your support, because it's all connecting like this land right here, man. And we just talk in a southerly direction when we talk Australia. 1530. Cataclysms are popping off. These disasters include a huge series of earthquakes and tsunamis. And a tsunami. Cardinal Moran, in his book about Pedro Fernandez de Cuero's Discovering Australia, mentions the huge earthquakes then occurring in 1606 in an obviously geologically volatile Australia which caused the natives to leave the Gladstone area and move further north. These natives we call, we today call the Taurus Straits Islanders. Other more inland Aborigines who enter Australia post 1530 moved over the mountains and settled in this area just before British discovery and settlement. David Rubini. Rubini, Rubani, was part of this group who fled from the South Continent. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> so, my what are they talking about? South Continent, right? What are they talking about? I, mean, I just, I just gotta know. When they say. Australia. Australia. Uh, Antarctica. What we got before. Now they connect this Australian Antarctic territory. They got a whole territory connected with this. If we're just looking at Antarctica, what did we get last time? The name Australia has been applied to two continents. Originally, it was applied to the South Pole Polar Continent. Because the name Australia means Southern and specifically from the hypothetical terror, Australia's hypothetical. Wow. It's on your maps. Same place Antarctica would be. Why is it hypothetical? Terror Australia is postulated in pre-modern geography before the modern hijack geography. The name was popularized by the explorer Matthew Flinders from 1804, and it has been in official use since 1817, replacing New Holland. Yeah. So they replaced that smaller continent, which was previously called New Holland, but Antarctica <laughs> has been Australia's for quite some time. We're just talking southerly. Southern. Okay, so we got a southern direction. That's all we're talking about. So when they bring it up, 
like I said, keep an open mind when they're talking about southern continent. We're just talking Australia or Antarctica. Did this David flee from Antarctica? You know what I mean, or did he flee from um, the continent, the small continent called Australia today? Which one are they talking about? Y'all let me know. <laughs> this is David Rubini. Rubini. We're going to get on this Rubini. <laughs> we surfing away. Who was Preston John? Let's go. David Rubini was part of this group who had fled from Antarctica or Australia. All right southern continent to arabia they say the lands of islam and we got this whole tartaria link uh, how islam you know always had these roots over here and all this stuff so are they just talking america that he fled from antarctica to america or is he talking about uh the middle east you know because you could <laughs> i guess that's what a dragonfly perspective gets you, man. Because you can read this and say, oh, David Rubini fled from Australia to the Middle East. Or you could say David Rubini fled from Antarctica, Australia, to America, which is Asia. Which one? It was possible that they fled to where Jeddah looked like Judah, right? Jeddah Island and Koba, Haba, which looks a lot like the Hebrew in modern day Baham, Baram. This may have been a temporary stopping place for these Israelites on leaving Australia or Australia. We're talking, I mean, I wouldn't even make this connection unless we, had, if we didn't have a map, <laughs> you know, that has Tara Zonka on it, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, how we started connecting this Tara Zonka flow. Love to the bro, Saku. Same orientation of Australia, except he goes way deeper now. And you can see the gateway going through. And who is this Moroni, man? Who's this Moroni character, man? We're talking Phoenicians, and you got a Phoenicia right here. And to the left, Tara Zonka, which we got before means Holy Land. Where do we get that? Let's pull it back up. Because, I mean, <laughs> repetition breaks the spell. I know you've seen it before. But have you seen it before? <laughs> they got Tarzan to churches. They got all this Jerusalem stuff happening now, right? Tarzan to Jerusalem. Managa. It's all about Tarzan to Latin. is holy land. Tarzan to and holy land are different places in Jerusalem, very far from each other, but they're both in Jerusalem. <laughs> Tarzante is Place de France, while Holy Land is the most ugly urban project at the site of the Holy Land Hotel and Motel. The second, man, they just trash in our culture, right? Because is this the real Tarzante? This place plaza del france is the holy land really we're the holy land hotel and, <laughs> and their model of the second temple or are they reconstructing our holy land in the so-called middle east tara santa means holy land Managa. so why are we seeing it in antarctica i'll wait i'll wait they don't have to put Holy Land on the map. They didn't, you know, uh, pre, they didn't have a prevision of these Nagas in the hood, in the ghetto, waking up saying, hey, I know what Tara Santa means. Holy Land. And who the hell is Santa Claus, man? He's supposed to be at these poles 
Santa is Santa. Santa is Santa. Like Santa Barbara, like Saint, right? It's holy land. Tara. Sacred. All this is sacred in Antarctica. So what's this author saying is what I'm saying. As crazy as it sounds, I'm taking my time with this. This is Preston John, installment number 97, man. Where my wave surf is at. Where my knockers in the back of the class. I see you, man. <laughs> hey, let's get it. I'm going to get this, and I'm going to get to some great comments and really take my time with the comments because y'all be popping off, man. And uh, I really want to, you know, give the A-hop to you, man. And, uh, yeah, let's just get it. <laughs> Hold on to your boot bones. Let's go. David Rubani was part of this group who had fled from the southern south continent to so-called arabia the land of islam okay remember about the arab proppers right Con. so arabia wouldn't be where the pretend arabs would be it would be where arab proper would be right just working this out with you Got to get back on my jock time flow for a minute. There we go. Jock time, right? Son of Eber. Kaka. Now, Sheba, we're going to talk, you know, Shambhala, Sheba. This is a title. It could be the name of his son as well, and the name of the land as well. But Sheba is a title of Shambhala or Sibola. All right, get the last drop. Ofer, land of gold. Havala, also connected to lands of gold. All this is connected to gold, right? <laughs> and Joktan is also Yucatan or Katan. <laughs> Back to the car, Katai. Also reminds me of the Kata or even the, the Choctaw, as they say, Choctaw. And this is what the Kumse was tribing up, man. You know what I'm saying? With all these tribes, the same way as Dragon Canoe was tribing up with the Choctaw and the Chickasaw. These, it's all family. So when we talk about it, it's like, what happened? What happened, fam? We know we fam. We know we Kata. We know we Kata. We know we, you know, seeds of Eber. You know what I'm saying? Choctaw. We know we connected with the Yucatan. So what happened? The district indicated is Arabia, right? They're talking about the place of settlement of Joktan's descendants is given as from Mesha, like Moshe. Reminds me of that Mesha stone as well, the Moabite stone. As as thou go into Safar, the mountain of the east, which is where they could be getting this Safarim, all connected to Jokta. From Kofi, a little Dakwata, we connected some of this Copen drop, Copenhagen, Blue Nile, and they're going to talk Blue Nile, an Indian River, and in part, and in Asia, or in part of Asia joining it. Where's Asia, right? Where's Asia? Manaka, where is Asia? I'll wait. 1531. And we're talking about these cataclysms in the 1530s, 1530. This is 1531. Where's Asia? So Asia was right here until the cataclysm, until this big curse of this land, you know what I'm saying? After the fall of Israel, that Columbus was looking for the holy city, right? We, we've been popping off in India Superior, man. This map is 1548, right? 1530, 1548, India Superior, Cathay, China, Asia, 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 Cathay, Florida, Cathay. Katai, Katai, 
Katai, Katai is Kata. Kata is Jakta, Kata. And his um, contribution, this Khan's contribution to the Arabic literature and the Arabic culture is what? Because you might think Arabic, Middle East, but that's not what this Arab was all about. That's not what that Afghana was all about. Right? <laughs> it was popping off, man. I told, I told you, hold on to your boot ball. According to the legend, the rulers of Afghanistan are descendants of the ancient Israelites from the tribe of Benjamin. Nah, they're not on some Middle East flow. They're on Benjamin time. Is it, it, is, it is extremely revealing, man, popping off, man. <laughs> extremely revealing that this assertion was expressed only in the 17th century, 1600s. That is after the breakup of the empire of the birth and the birth of Islam. So the breakup of the empire is the breakup of Israel, the holy city being conquered. And when that happened, Islam was born. Don't let them put all this, oh, we got all these roots in America, all this stuff, man. You're talking Mohammedan tribes, you're talking, you know, tribes going after their own pagan, uh, you know, idolatrous gods, false gods, fallen dragons, they summoning dragons. You know, Islam as a religion, as we know it, is just being born in the 1600s. <laughs> after the breakup of Israel. This book costs a thousand dollars to tell us this. The adherence of this version maintains that King Saul had a son, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah is writing in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse nine, King David, you know, Hawa saying, whom I will raise up. He's prophesying that King David will be raised up. Why was his connection with Dawi? Jeremiah is the son of King Saul. King Saul died. Jeremiah had a son named Afghan, man. Jeremiah died approximately at the same time as his father, Saul. Afghana secured a high position in the rule of King David. So this is a David flow when you talk about Afghana, Afghanistan, Arabs, Arabia. Because there's an Arab proper and an Arab pretender, right? What's the Katans, Joktans, Yucatans? Talking the Meshe, the Moshe. What's his contribution to the Arabian flow? In Genesis 10, Joktan is described as the ancestor of several South Arabian tribes. Not the Middle East, Managa. Arab proper, man. <laughs> In accordance with the statement, Arab genealogists hold Katan to be the first king of Yemen. I don't know, but does it have anything to do with this Yemen flow? You know, after they done wiped up, wiped out all these indigenous tribes, made treaties on them. Now suddenly you're just popping off in Afghan <laughs> and Yemen, right? Afghan and Yemen, Afghan and Yemen, Afghan and Yemen. Huh? War on terror. Yeah, I know what they told us it was about, but what was it about? Do you believe them? Do you believe them? <laughs> I know what they said that they never found. Look how long they were in Afghan. My God. Can't make this up. Afghan was in the court of David and remain at the royal court during the rule of Solomon. So whatever they were destroying had something to do with you.
and his son and successor, Yarub, the first person who spoke Arabic. Whoa. You're going to have to address this, man. Islam. <laughs> going to have to address this. So the language you're speaking was first spoken by the son of Eber. Or the grandson of Eber. Joktan's son. Yaru, the first to speak Arabic. So Arabic can't predate the Eberu because Yarub is the grandson of Eber. And so Arabic is coming out of the Eberu. So why don't you go back to the Eberu? If you know you're from Eber, why not go back to Eber? This is but the legendary form of the tradition that Katan was the progenitor of the South Southern Arabs or Arab pro I can't, my not Arab proper, man. We never heard of a distinction between the Arabs before, but this is an Arab proper. And then you got the pretending, right? While Ishmaelite Arabs were originally of non-Arab stock, not of Arab proper stock, but pretending to be Arabs. Not Arab proper. There's a difference because one is pure water connected with Eber. The Katan. And through this flow with Joktan, Katan, you know, they're giving a Baruch flow to the Arab proper. Ishmael, coming out of Abraham, you know what I'm saying? Popping off out of Abraham. So why wasn't he, why was he not considered Arab style? What's the name Arab made? I mean, have we looked that up yet? Arab meaning? Arab, Arab, a member of a Semitic people, right? We're talking Shem, we're talking Eber, gotcha. Originally from the Arabian Peninsula neighboring territories, man. What's, what does it mean, man? They just say the meaning of an Arab is an Arab speaking. <laughs> the meaning of Arab is a member of an Arab speaking people. Come on, man. So is there a definition? Just belonging to Arabs? Belonging to Arab countries? Arab means belonging or relating to Arabs. That's a meaning. Wow. So I don't know. Maybe it's a mystery. You know, I'm just belly flopping in it, but y'all let me know. What does it mean? Why isn't Ishmael a proper Arab? Why is he a pretending Arab, adopting Arab customs? Why weren't these customs Ishmael, Ishmael's custom? Why did he have to intermarry with genuine Arabs? Why wasn't he a genuine Arab? And by that, he has to go back into the stock of Qatar. Qatar. Let's go. Let's go. I'm just talking air proper. <laughs> An air pretender. Yeah. <laughs> Rubini was part of this group who fled from the southern continent to Arabia, the lands of Islam. Now, are we talking Arab proper or pretender? It was possible that they fled to where Jeddah Island and Koba 
C-H-O-B-A-H, in modern day Bahrain, B-A-H-R-A-I-N. This may have been a temporary stopping place for these Israelites or on leaving Australia, formally embraced, embracing Islam and heading for Afghan, right? Afghan, Afghanistan. So he says DNA evidence confirms that a clan of the tribe of Manasseh was present in Oman and Pakistan. However, and you know, we dodge all their DNA stuff because, you know, you already see he's trying to make everybody white anyway, right? So, however, these lost Israelites were actually the remnant of the kingdom of Eber, ah, which is called Ba, C-H-O-B-A-H. So again, they put the C's on it sometimes like Kanan and Hanan and Anion, you know what I'm saying? You got David Sosslin having this uh, Hanan. David Sosslin, Exilarch, right? He's the son of Prester John. Prester John's son is also a David. His brother is Hanan and Salima. And we looked up different variations of this Hanan, and sometimes they put a C in front. And his name is Canaan or Kana. <laughs> and we say, whoa. So you can just add that C anytime you want to. <laughs> but now you got to choose your Canaan. And so when they say land of Canaan, I think sometimes they're just flipping it because there's two Canaans, you know what I'm saying? And Canaan is Anna. Right. But we're just talking about the kingdom of Anna. You know, that whole flow. So. Let's go. Koba is Haba or Heber. Habor or Hever. Like Kivera. They put the C or K or, or Q. And now you're at the Kivera, which is where we get on that Anion map. We're going to get this Anion coming in hot. You know, I got it up. Finally, you're going to just dig on it, you know, take our time and, and you know, take a trip to British, uh, British Columbia, man, Vancouver. I had the pleasure of uh, living there for a year, man, and just sightseeing and having a good time with Chef Condi and my droplets at that time. My, my son was actually born <laughs> in uh, Vancouver, man. So, you know, I mean, we really uh, put our flag down up there as well, man. And we can feel, you know, the vibration of our people there, man. You know, they they hide a lot, but you can see it all over the place. The indigenous flow is just all over the place and all throughout Canada, Canada, the indigenous flow is prevalent, man. So, you know, all this is connected. All this is connected, you know, back up to the... Uh, Uh, what was it? The what was that India Superior man? Oh yeah, Tangu. <laughs> they also call it Tanduk, T N T E N D O C or T A N G U T. But this is where a big popular war popped off in all these books between Preston John and Genghis Khan and. Look how high up it is. So it's up there in Canada, man, in Canada. All this is India superior. So we got to look into the so-called British Columbia or, you know, Canadian flow when it comes to the press. All this is connected. You know what I mean? And we just talking Kavera because <laughs> they talking Kavera, but we see it on the maps. My naga, we see it on the maps. We got some great maps on this flow. We're gonna get this, but I'm just looking at the map right here, this Kavera flow. Let's get it bigger.
So you can see to the left, spelled with a Q. Now this Kaver is the same as the Hever or Hever that we just got. And you see it in multiple maps. You see Kaver there, you see another Kaver right here with a Q. This is Ortelius 1570 map and uh, Rus Ruskelli 1598 with Anion on it. Anion and Kaver, as well as Sivola right there in the middle. That's the biggest they're going to get me, man. But you see it, my naga. You blow it up, man. You see. All right. Tell man. So we got Kaveri, got Adion being the same as what they're calling Eber, Eber. Heber is Eber, which is why we've been digging on Jokta, because his son, is uh Jaru <laughs> Jaru <laughs> and they say he's the first to speak Arabic you know he's the Arab proper Arab proper stock is of high you know high regal negro status of the kingdom of Eber which is you know later to be called the kingdom of Israel but the kingdom of Israel coming out of Jacob coming out of Shalak <clears throat> coming out of um um, you know, Isaac coming out of Abraham, Anaga, you know what I'm saying? All the way, you know, back to this jock time flow, this Eber flow, you know. So, yeah, in a sense, Israel was born out of Egypt in the sense of, you know, that particular captivity, bondage, and Joseph rising and the brothers being there. But this Melchizedek flow, this energy, the same priest king that, you know, Abraham ran up on when he was 99 years old or 100 years old or something, and he started circumcising everybody. That same Melchi Frizodek is priest king, Melchi Zedek, Melchi priest. I mean, Melchi king, Zedek, priest. So in searching for Prester John, it's not just one person here. We're talking about an energy, Kind of like Moses transferring his energy to Joshua in Deuteronomy 34. He lays his lays his hands on Joshua, transfers his, his ruach. Now Joshua's parting the, the waters and stopping the sun from, from moving in his tracks and the moon to finish the war. That magi flow is an energy. Israel energetically is connecting directly with these kingdoms here. So it's not some brand new thing because it's coming out of Jacob. That's just a continuation of it, of the seed of the Baruch, but that's not the beginning of it. It's not the beginning. The remnant of the kingdom of Eber, Kaba, Habo, Eber, or Hever. All right, and you put the Q on there and you got Kiver or Kivera. Kivera. Or a K or Theba, Sheba. All right. We're talking C bold. We put it all together. All right, because all that <laughs> all that's on the map. So when they say Hever, we know we're talking Hever. Kaver. When they talk uh uh, Sheba or Deba, you got Cibola. I know it's small right here, but we'll get it again in the um, Forbidden Histories of America as well, spelled C E V O L A or C I B O L A, which is Calais Loose. All promised land. So you link all this land together, you got the land of the Preston and, and much, much more. You got the, that link to the three Indies. The so-called Antarctica, Australia, my nigga, Tara Sancta. Let's check out what he said. He said, I am David, the son of King Solomon. Mm. May the memory of the righteous be for a blessing. Now, again, we're just matching this up with the timeline. 
I know that biblically speaking, you got David and he has, he has a son, Solomon. This David is the son of Solomon, which lets, lets you know he's not the first David, right? So we're trying to match it up in the timeline back to Who's the other David we had? XLR. Okay, okay. Oh, we had, oh, no, all right, all right. So, XLR, let's go back. This David. <laughs> uh, is the son of Preston, who also has the title of Soli, right? like Soliman, same as with Forbidden Histories of America. Wow, let's link this up, man, in real time, man. Let's, let's pop off. If we go pop off, let's pop off or not. All right. Getting linky, but I need to get that Forbidden Histories of America back. See if we got that hype right now. Here we go. Got so many tabs. All right, let's just surf the wave with this. First of all, I said I'm gonna show you Civola. So let me show you that a little bigger. Yeah, so this is that Lake Kapala again, you know, seven cities. How does that link to Capilia? On these maps, you see C E V O L A or C E. Sometimes it looks like a U, but you know they have it as C I B O L A, which is Kalalus, right? The guarded secret land of Kalalus, which means promised land, or Cibola, which means what? Shimbala, pure land, pure land, promised land, same thing. See how big it is here? It's the same as this small writing. That you'll see down here. See Bola. Kaka. Which is Kalalus. And Kalalus means what? Yeah, these artifacts popping out of Arizona, swords popping out of Arizona with dragon inscriptions on them. Pray for the soul of Israel. May the earth lie light on thee. He has glory to ancestral glory. Israel, defender of the faith. Israel reigns 67 years. This is what's written on the crosses in Arizona. Arizona, my not. Israel the second rules for six. Israel the third was 26 years old. 26 years old when he began to rule. Inter internecine war to conquer or die, he flourishes in ancestral honor day by day. Kalalus means what? Promised land. So they said Cibola or Kalalus, which is promised land, man. Land of America. Let's get it bigger. Land of America. Let's get it bigger. Land of America. Is the promised land. How many Sources do you need? <laughs> Forbidden Histories of America by Daniel Lowe's. Go. <laughs> so when they talk, David, son of Solomon, you have this example here where this Solomon you know, or this Prester John, Solomon's a title. So before the Solomon, we know there's a Solomon. <laughs> now he's the father of Solomon the first, Hanan or Cana or Cain, <laughs> and David the sixth, which is why I said that can't be David the first. I am David, the son of King Solomon. Let's just take it slow. 
may the memory of the righteous be for blessing and my brother is king joseph i am david the son of Solomon. Emperor of Soli has a son, David. I mean, is this the David, you know, of this uh, Rubati or Rubini? Now, Solomon, right? <laughs> son of Solomon, David, son of Solomon. Sylvanus to Texas. His dad is. Sylvanus Bravo, who's also called Solomon the Second. And we got to get on that Kalelus link that is talking about Solomon Bravo going to war with this giant. So he's matching this David flow. You know what I mean? And, you know, <laughs> I mean, we, we can't make this stuff up. Solomon, Ogam, or Bravo, or Barber. So the Barber title, when they say Barbarian, any of that stuff is connected to the swan, not some wild, uh, it's, it's not some derogatory situation. I mean, <laughs> they're talking about the Almec, my nagi. The Almec or the Shishi. We're going to get back on the Shishi, bring it back to these dynasties, the Tangu dynasties. This Karakatai flow. But all this is connected with the Almac, man. And unfortunately, Daniel Lowe took it out of his book. So, you know, it's a whole part that he skipped on this thing. The legend of Dune, of Ogre, are based on the activities of his family descended from Duan, Duan, Antegun, <laughs> Ogir, Sylvanus, Bravo, or Solomon, Barber, or Swan. Hebrew word of the day, Barber, means swan. We're talking swan nights, swan boats. <laughs> Let's go. Shaped like a swan. We're talking to Barber. Ships of Solomon, Managa. The ships of Salima. These trading vessels are known as the ships of Salima or the swan boats or the barber Salima. The legends of Ogur, the Dane, son of Godfrey, Kadro, and Dune de Mainz actually referred to Tuatha de Danan de Dunan, who were also known as Mananan or Maine of America, where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found. Wait, Daniel Lowe, say it ain't so. <laughs> I'm reading the same thing here. Tuatha de Dene, you know, Legends of Ogre today, Son of Godfrey, Cadro, do that, man. De Mainz actually referred to Tuatha de Dene or Dune, who are also known as Mananan or Maine of America. It skips that ogre line in Almec and it goes into the Irish legend of Regamon also alluded to this family. It don't mention the Almec here. There's a line missing right here. This is the line. <laughs> After it says Maine of America is supposed to say where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found, then go into the Irish legend of Regamon. Right after it says America, Maine of America, it should say where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found. What is it saying in Daniel Lowe's book? And he's the one that wrote this. <laughs> Main of America, period. They took out the line where the giant head. Come on. They took out the line where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found. Why, my nigga? Why? They don't want to put a face to it. They want to make these people Caucasian. They don't want to go against the grain with the Roman Jewish history, because if he represents the Roman Jew, then we're talking about Remani Hebrews. Remani means pomegranate, pomegranata, pomegranagas. 
This is the all make ogre image that they made Shrek into a real derogatory ogre when he's really the all Mac getting invaded. He just wants his pawn back. He just wants his pawn back. So Venus Oga, who, although they didn't mention the ogre, <laughs> they did say that in the first century, Kalelus was founded by Sylvanus Oga, Babylonian Exilarch, Sylvanus Oga. So he predates Solomon the Builder, Sylvanus Totexas. Is this his dad? I'm just trying to link this, you know, Solomon, uh, you know, David being the son of Solomon, because Sylvanus Bravo is a Solomon. Hmm. Is this a David? Is Sylvanus Bravo David? He is slaying giants, right? I mean, another thing that <laughs> seems to have been left out. The great Roman Jewish warrior, right? So this Sylvanus or Solomon II or Bravo or Berber, the great Remani Hebrew, because if this is the Roman Jew, there's a problem, boss, <laughs> in the in the land of history and, and, and regular stuff. Uh, the matrix is going to have a glitch if this is the Roman and the Jew and the Israelite. Did y'all go to war against Israel, man? Is this also the image of the say? I think so. I think so, boss. The great Ramani Hebrew warrior who defeated the giant. How many Nagas are defeating giants? We are speculating that this could be King David under a different title of Salima <laughs> or Sylvanus, which also refers to the silver mines, but also refers to Shalom and you know, uh, Shalawam. I mean, Sylvanus, Saliman, Shalawam, all the same. Ogon or Bravo. He defeated the great American emperor of Ogam or Ogir called Juan Antaku in later European legends. Juan means oak and describes the stature of Antaku. So he went to war against somebody who had the stature of an oak tree. We're talking about the giant. This giant had the size of an oak tree. <laughs> and David or Sylvanus Ogam, Bravo, where they're getting the barber title. So you can't use no barber title if you ain't talking David or Sylvanus Salimah. So I'm just saying, David slays a giant. Sylvanus Ogam slays a giant in America. Og, right? Ain't, ain't this the Moabite giant Og that Moshe had to slay? Of Ogam, is that, is this another title? Is he, now you got the Og script or the Ogam script named for Sylvanus Ogam, Solomon II. Or Shalom, or Sulam, Salim. So when they say uh, "As Salam Alaikum," Salam is Salim, is Sulam, is Shalom, is Shalawa, is Sylvanus, Salvinus, and Salvo, who brought it from America to Europe. They brought what the Ogam script. And does this have anything to do with the Voynich Manuscript? We'll get back into that. We ain't forgot about the Voynich, my noggin. We coming in hot. <laughs> Press the 100 might be all Voynich, man. <laughs> Trying to crack the code. So the Ogam script, named after who could be David himself, 
or someone under the title Solomon II, who is an ancestor of Solomon to Texas or Sylvanus to Texas. Because now, by the time Theodorus or Nehemiah comes over here, you know, they fight him for the American Empire of Kalelus. So Venus to Texas is the one that he's running up on. Which reminds us of that, you know, after the days of Solomon, the kingdom is divided. And, you know, it's an Israel on Israelite war going up all the way up, right? So we just, we keeping all this in mind, man. You know, we got ogre heads and Amex connected with the Mananan and Tuathas and the Ogiers back to the Ogams and the Bravos and the Barbers. We got Shishia with these swords with dragons on them. This is technology you look like to me. <laughs> Technologies. Let's go. So, <laughs> all that to say. This Exilarch David the Sixth clearly isn't the first. I am David might not be talking about David the First. He's the son of King Solomon. Or what Solomon the <laughs> Second. I mean, we can pontificate that all day. Is he the son of? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Let's just say Solomon. Oh, there we go. All right, Solomon II, Shalom. You know what I mean? Sylvanus Ogam, who founded Kalelus in the first century BC. We're talking about the American Empire, Managa, of Kalelu or Cibola. Or Shimbala, right? Let's go. So he says, I am David, the son of King Solomon. May the memory of the righteous be for blessing. And my brother is King Joseph, who is older than I, and who sits on the throne of his kingdom in the wilderness of Habor, which we know is Eber. <laughs> a boy. and we've talking about Eber. We're talking about Kiber or Kavera, my not Ania. Come on, man. We got all these different resources up, so we're just putting it together. Praise the walk. Like I said, man, I feel. I feel like we locked in, man. You know what I'm saying? This this ain't about just getting to press the 100. This ain't about no vanity. This is about the beginning and the continuation of this journey of ours that's unlocked everything from orientation to, you know, just as a code keeper, the frequency, you know, that's available for us to know that we are the superior Khan, when you connect to be a regal Naga. You need to connect to your priesthood so you know who you are, so you can get the breadcrumbs. But first, you got a KTC. That's why Hosea 3 says, search for Hawa and King David. That's why Jeremiah 30 says, David, who I will raise up unto them. That's why Psalms 89 says, my covenant's with thy we and his seed forever. He's my firstborn bond. So this is amazing. You can't just discount it. They want to make it Caucasian, really. First century BC, America. Caucasians got an empire here. Stop it. Jewish people got an empire here. First century BC, stop it. Not when they're giving us the face. Monogamy, not 
when they given us the face. <clears throat> wow. I mean, <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. So this David, son of Solomon, his brother's King Joseph, he's on a throne in the wilderness of Eber or Cavera. All right, we're still in America. Rules over 30 myriads of the tribes of Gad and the tribe of Reuben and the half tribe of Manasseh. So that's why there have these labels when you look them up in Genie. Same David. But let's look at the timelines. Huh? <laughs> I mean, you know, at least the same title. We're going to talk Dodi in a second. Dodi and Dots. And now all this is David, King David the Fourth, Dodi of Rubadi, Gadi, and Mani. His father is Saliman. Whoa. Uh oh, we're getting closer to a hard hit. What I tell you, we investigate, we put the Davids together, put the timelines. Things start matching up. You can't tell us we wrong. We investigate. Get up out our classroom. Or get in the back of the class. But watch out for my noggin in the back. Because he might, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he might, you know, you know what I'm saying? Sock you in the head bone if you say something crazy. <laughs> Shout out to my noggin protecting us from the back of the class, man. <laughs> Come, come, man. Hey, dragons on the wall. Dragoons on the wall. So what do we got here, man? Let's let's put this all together. Uh, come, man. Are we finding a hard hit? I am David, the son of Solomon. All right, David, the son of Solomon. Here's a David whose father is King Solomon, solely the fifth. Of Rubadi, Gadi, and Mani. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Okay. Okay. And he's the father of Joseph, this Solomon. And didn't this David just say that my brother is King Joseph, who is older than I and who sits on the throne of his kingdom? in the wilderness of Habor or Ebor, Kavera, and rules over 30 myriads of the tribe of Gad and of the tribe of Reuben and a half tribe of Manasseh. <clears throat> right? <laughs> so we just found this, this uh, Dawi here, man. And we could put a date on it. Say it with me, man. Body back for the illusion, man. This is Preston 97. <clears throat> oh, man, let me clear my throat. It's getting too good to us, man. Oh, uh, I guess so. Is it is it possible? Is it possible? This is who they found when they found us, man. You got Joseph. You got the Davids. You got the tribes of Gad. I mean, all this stuff is happening. We're connecting it with this Eber. The Eber is right here in Kavera, my naga. All this is North America, Florida, all this, right? We got the Yucatan, Jocktown flow. 
We got Joseph, who's the brother. And they don't even say, <laughs> that's funny. They make you work for it because they don't even say he's the brother of David right here. They don't say his brother is David, right? You got to go back to King Solomon, who says, finally, it says son of King David. And the father, or he's the son of King David. Father of Joseph. God. So this King David the fourth, father of Solomon, of Rubadi, Gadi, and Mai. Oh, Khan, Khan. So he's the father of Solomon. What does this one say? Son of King Solomon. Oh, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. See if we can match these uh, Davids up. I mean, we did. <laughs> I thought he's the son of Solomon. And that's why I was uh, going the other way with it. Okay. Let's get it right. We got it. We got it. We back. <laughs> so, Father of King Solomon. Okay, got you. But King Solomon is the father of Joseph. So it looked at first like this was his dad, and then he's also the father of Joseph, which would make him his brother. So I'm over here popping off like, whoa, this is ridiculous. <laughs> we, we mighty close, man, with this David. Wow, we close. Oh, we right there, my nuggets. Because they, they just give us little bits and pieces. But I still think that this timeline is accurate. And somebody probably got their story, you know, it could be none of this is at, you know, 100, you know, this could be that, that could be that. But we see the Joseph, the David and the Solomon flow. That's for sure. There's also this David here. Now, now they put him in 1200s. Okay. Now, this one doesn't say who his father is. It says he's the father of Princess Dara of Rubadi, Gadi, Amani, Hanan, or Kana, and Princess Limbu. Now, that's when you start getting into the high Amazon queens. But at least we know why they're called king over Rubadi, Gadi, Amani. I mean, just like, you know, if you're, if you're Judah, if you're King David, all the tribes of Israel are under you. You know what I'm saying? So you naturally will have that scepter over the northern tribes and the rest of the southern tribes if we're talking about King David, you know what I'm saying? Let's go back. So which Joseph is holding down the throne in the wilderness of Eber. He says, I have journeyed before from before the king, my brother, his counselor, the 70 elders, they charged me to go first to Rome to the presence of the Pope. May his glory be exalted. I left them by way of the hills 10 days journey. So his older brother is Joseph, at least, you know, according to this story, you know, this timeline. Again, you know, we're trying to piece it together and these authors aren't all the way accurate with their gene gene genealogies, e even in genie, you know, they're not going to be all the way. So whether, you know, son of Solomon or Solomon, son of David, you know, where are we going to pick it up in the timelines, the 1200s, the 1400s? I mean, it all seems very recent enough to at least tell us one thing. That the kingdom of Kalelus, when when the Papa Bull says subjugate these kingdoms, these dukedoms, these principles, I mean, they're talking about the kingdoms, man, the kingdoms of Eber, the Eber root.
So they charged him to go to Rome. Who? I have journeyed from before the king, my brother. So Joseph, according to the story, told David to present himself to this pope. Now we're talking the pope, we're talking Preston, you know, what year is this? <laughs> I mean, they're okay. So let's let's back up a little bit. Maybe this will help us narrow down these Davids a little bit, timeline wise. They're giving us the timeline right here, fourteen hundreds to fifteen fifty A.D. They're talking about cataclysmic events of fifteen thirty. And remember them time them timeline shifts, you know. Anatoly Fermenko, right? Three major chronological time shifts, 333 years, 1,053 years. Come on, we got to remember this because this is going to help us look at this and ask these questions. Are they talking about the 1800s? Are they talking about the 1500s? You know, they could have pushed time back 300 years and the events of 1830. You know, they could push back to 1530 easily just to, you know, play with us a little bit, give us a little half truth. You know, um, if I'm thinking about meteors and meteorites. I'm thinking about, uh, what is it, the 18? Well, we know we got the Coombs Comet, 1812. You also got an 1833. Meteor storm. It's not even not even a shower, but a storm. The Linnid meteor storm was seen across the United States in the night and early morning, November 12th and 13th, 1833. Those who were awake to witness the storm were in awe as between 50,000 and 15. 150,000 dragons, man, because we know what a meteor is, man. <laughs> Fell each hour. 100,000 dragons an hour are popping off. I don't think they've seen nothing like this, quite like this since. Now, this would be 300 years <laughs> after their 1530 situation. I mean... Is there like a 1530 meteor storm or something? You know? I mean, not that they're going to tell us off the bat, you know, maybe I'm not searching. Clear them. Let me see year. Let me put year in front. 1530, I'm just going to say meteor. Boom. Let's go 16th century. Got a 1577 hit. Ooh, 1531 hit. A description of the comet of 1531, 16th century. Handwritten. <laughs> The description is an early account of the passage of Halley's Comet across the sky. Unlike most comets, which have very long period orbits, this one returns at regular intervals of about 76 years. You know, these comets mean something, right? So 
whether we're talking 1530 or 1800s, you know what I mean? What are we talking, uh, you know, Ish, Ishmael's migration in the 1800s in correlation with this. I mean, what's all happening right here in America? But these disasters include a huge series of earthquakes, tsunamis. So we got all that. So David Rabati, he leaves this southern continent, right? The same David Rabati. It's the same Rabati Gadi Mati <laughs> that we've been talking about. And I like this year more now. 1435, because again, we're in the 1400s to 15, 1550. So this David Rabani really seems like, a, you know, a, a very close hit to the same King David, the fourth Dodi of Rabadi Gadi Amadi. Rubini, this would be Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. And dang, I mean, we're talking fourteen hundreds, man. <laughs> I want you to get that through your head, Bo. He has a son, King Solomon. Because before, when we we're talking about David Sauslin and then they got him on another kind of timeline. He's estimated before thirteen o two. He's the father of Hasdai, the brother of Solomon the first. And Hana, Hana. Then you got this David, father of Hana, 1200, father of Dara, right? So now you're getting into the Amazon queen. Dara of Rabadi Gadi Amadi, Princess Lembu of Rabadi Gadi Amadi. These are the royal, these are the regal Nagas, right? So I'm just checking out this timeline. So whether they got him in the 1200s here for David, David Sauslin here, they got him before 1300s. So maybe 1200s flow connected with Roger here, Roger Chola the second, who is Preston John, but he got in gang, he got invaded by Genghis Khan. They say estimated before 1195. So now we're talking the same period that Genghis Khan invaded Preston John, right? The war. We're going to get back into that war so we can understand. But we had to first talk more and more, talk treaties, talk necromancy, <laughs> talk jock time, talk any and then come back full spiral, man. Hey, so. You got a 1200 flow here. 1200 flow here, but then you got a damn near 14, 1500 flow here. And King Joseph is popping off circa 1475, 1500s, man. Now, he don't say who he's the father of, so we don't know if his lineage continued or did they all get killed off, man. These hijacks Columbus in them. While he's over here looking for the holy city, having a prophecy concerning the need to recover the holy city in America. We're talking the islands of the Indies to, to conquer and invade Mount Zion. This is dated 1501. Who's over there, man? King Solomon in it. <laughs> King David and them, King Joseph and them. I mean, what's this got to do with this Solomon we're talking about over here? Solomon, right? Sylvanus all gone. But they got him way in the BCs, right? <laughs> they say he founded Kalelu's first century BC. Back to chronology. 
for the mango. Fermenko's new chronology condenses this down to 1,200 years ago. We're talking about the dawn of human civilization. <laughs> Has this particular matrix only been popping off for the last 1,200 years? You know what I'm saying? This is what he's trying to say. By arguing the events of civilization were artificially placed further back in time. That's why we can belly flop into the 1500s from the 1800s. So when they talk first century BC or first or 1 AD, you can add 300 years to that, you're gonna find a hit. You can add a thousand years to that, you're gonna find a hit. You can add 1,800 years to that, 1,800 years, my naga, and you're going to find a hit because they push time back in these three major time shifts. So you got events happening in the BCs that did not happen in the BCs. If they say Daniel wrote the book of Daniel in the 6th century, some say 2nd century and different things, BC, some push it to the sixth century or before. You add 1800 years to that sixth century BC, you're back in what? The 1200s, where it seems like it's all happening. King David, Daniel, the son of David, second bond, kill you. or they can throw him back as far as possible, 1800 years into sixth century BC. I'm talking Anatoly for the Manco's global chronological diagram. They can take King David from the 1400s AD. I said they can take King David David Rubati from the 1400s or 1500s or 1600s and push him back 1800 years and now he's in the BC because they don't want you to connect to your modern history because if you did you would say what the hell the war was just popping off they don't want you to feel that warrior spirit no more. They want you to think, oh, this is 2,000 years ago. But Anatoly Fermenko done told us one thing, that they have roughly pushed time back 330 years, 1,050 years, and 1,800 years. These are the shifts, my God. These are the shifts back in time. When they shift, that's like them shift and drop nation 1800 years back and later we don't exist no more in, in, in the 2000s. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we're from 200 AD and you can't tell history nothing. It's in the books. We're from 200 AD now because they pushed us back 1800 years. 1,778 years to be exact. David Rubini appears to be the same Rubini, Rubani, father of Suleiman, father of Yosef III, Yossi. Let's, let's keep going. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's getting fun, man. So I'll pick it up quickly right here. Here we go talking about giants again. Giants in Australia, giants in Antarctica, man. David Rubini traveled for 10 days by land from Eber Inland, Australia. Covera, America, my noggin. To Qadar. Jeddah, Jeddah, Jopa. <laughs> they say everything but Judah, right? <laughs> they say everything but Jew. 
I see you, man. I see you playing with us. Mm. Ten days journey. He traveled and then he sailed on the Indian Ocean or the Ocean of the Indians or the Ethiopian Sea. Right. But we ain't talking Africa, man. We're talking Ethiopia, Far East, America. 10 days journey so he didn't sell for 10 days he traveled for 10 days whether he traveled by foot whether he traveled by uh, horse and carriage we don't know but it took him 10 days all right now if you're talking about australia it's hard to really see you know what i mean but if we're just talking Kavera, from Kavera to kadar <laughs> and we done played around with kadar and how they changed the K's to C's and how that could be cedar, right? So you got, in Utah, you got a cedar city. Uh, and then you got a Cavera, right? I mean, if I'm just looking at this, you know, real rough light, you got a Cavera, you know, you got cedar city or Kadar <laughs> in Utah, you know, Cavera might be more California, you know, and then it took him 10 days maybe by, you know, horse and carriage or, you know, some type of other method. I don't think he was going too quickly. But, you know, did it take him 10 days to get from Cali to Utah? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying this is a plausible situation here, especially if you are, you know, really taking your time. You ain't going 100 miles per hour like that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he walked. Maybe he walked. Maybe it took him 10 days to walk. I don't know, man. <laughs> so we play with it, but we're seeing what it is. He landed at a port in Tanzania or Zanzibar. Uh-huh. Don't let me find Zanzibar. Wait a minute, man. Uh, I think I'm tripping, but let me just see. Just in case I'm not tripping. Okay, that's Zagata. All right, all right. We're going to keep looking for Zanzibar, man. I thought I saw it on this one, but it'll pop up. It'll pop up. All right. So he traveled to Zanzibar. Then he joined an Arab caravan going to the kingdom of Sinar or Sheba. <laughs> so now he's on the way to Kalelu, Cibola. I mean, you see how this path is happening. He leaves Kavir, then, you know, California-ish. Heads towards Kadar or Sidar, Udal, Judah, right? We're talking Jedi, Jedi. <laughs> Sails on the Indian Ocean, Red Sea to Ethiopia. Or maybe he just, you know, was crossing towards, you know, these plains, you know, not going across some super ocean. But we don't know. We don't know. Joins a caravan and goes to Sheba. All right. It was two months journey. The king there was called Omara or Amara. Hmm. Kind of like the Amora, like the Gomorrah, like Sodom and Amora, Amara. And he stayed with the king at his capital on the blue now love to aqua tie that's connecting with the cof and coping coping drop which means blue he traveled up the blue now to egypt and eventually came to europe after many adventures with the pope and kings jews and conversos he disappeared from europe he next appeared in afghanistan recently i read an article giving some proof that australia and tanzania were connected back as far as 900 ADs by this, the discovery of two coins on the Wessel Islands from Kilwa Sultanate in Tanzania. All right, so they're connecting his genealogy, David Rubani, known also as Pushtun, folk hero, Dawu Rubani, <laughs> heard about the Benjamite ruled 
Kingdom in Afghanistan. My naga, I can't make this up. I'm reading this because it's connected to every part of our investigation. And we got a great dismount. Uh, just remember this Antarctica flow. We got a great dismount. So almost there. Let's go. David Rubani. He heard about the Benjamin ruled kingdom of Afghanistan, where we heard this before in that thousand dollar book, Medieval Empire of the Israelites. <laughs> Benjamin ruled Afghanistan. It's because King Saul, the Benjamite, his son is Jeremiah, whose son is Afghan. So the Benjamites are ruling Afghan, my naga. According to the legend, the rulers of Afghanistan are the, the descendants of the ancient Israelites. Afghanistan has nothing to do with no Arab, what we call today, Middle Eastern, yada, yada. This is ancient Israel, Afghan, son of Yeramah, from the tribe of Benjamin. So David Rubani heard about the Benjamin, Benjamite ruled kingdom of Afghanistan, and he made an alliance with them and the remnants of his people moved into Asia. <laughs> you already know. Which one? Everything is over here, boss. The South America connects directly to Asia, China. This became North America in our head bone. But this is Grand Tartary. So we read about that Tartarian drop. You know, it's all happening. You know what I'm saying? But it's India superior in the land of the Presta, straight up like that. It ain't about no white folk that's trying to establish themselves again in antiquity. Redhead Tartarian white people in America. Cut it. R Roman Jewish colonies in America. Cut it. Caucasian, Egyptian, Phoenician, Israelites. Cut the shit, man. How insecure must you be to write yourself in history when it ain't your history? But that's how thirsty you are to have some type of story, some type of place in history. <laughs> but it's all about the superior Naga, the Indian. We are who we are, man. We 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 got bum rushed, ramsacked, hoodwinked, bamboozled. You didn't want to be us then. Now you want to be us. Cate, India Superior, South America, Peru, Cusco, Mexico, China. <laughs> Where's Asia? My naga. Okay. Fifteen thirty, right? It's all happening. Where's Asia? So David made an alliance with the sons of Afghan, the sons of Jeremiah. The same Afghana who secured a high position in the rule of King Dawi and ruled in a royal court during the rule of Solomon. So in David's rule, Afghana had a high position under David, which is why David <laughs> can make an alliance with the remnants of his people moved into Asia and they nominally at least embraced the Muslim faith. Nominally, man. We know we have people doing and connected to all different things, you know, so I can't say no one did this, no one did that, but Israel is still Israel. 
the ancestors of the Khazars. Now we're talking Khazaria, which I told you before, connects back to Mazaka, right? So Mazaka became Mazaka through a swerving from Mosak and the Byzantine flow. The Byzantine flow was taken out one year after the 15 or 1452 Papal Bull Doom Diverses. Pope Nicholas does the signs the you know treaty with them says hey man go subjugate these nagas go subjugate israelites one year later the Byzantine falls now these were under the tribes of moses mashika the mosak tribes right there uh you know in that asia both asia's connecting Byzantine is still asia asia's asia asia is asia <laughs> The Byzantine still connects with Asia. So if the Byzantine is over here, you know, Europe, Byzantine, all this is connected through Grand Tartary, man, back to what you call North America, Florida, China, Mexico. A la carte de, de, de Navagera, Porcachi, Porcachi, Tomasi. <laughs> you see it, man. South America connecting directly to India Superior. There ain't no North America, man. <laughs> Where are we, man? Where are we? But the Khazars is Khazaria. It became Khazaria and then Cappadocia after Mazaka, originally Moses or Mosak, which they call an ancestral uh, foundational legend, a tribal primal ancestor, a Shemite. And then here comes the swerving and now we got Mazaka and Khazar, Khazars. The original Khazars are the tribes of Moses, Mazaka, Mashika. And here it says the ancestor of the Khazars, tribes of Manasseh, Kabars, Khazars, <laughs> and Benjamin. Mm. Cinemites or Shemites. <laughs> and had earlier left the southern continent, Antarctica, <laughs> in the third century, along with the Naf. Highlights and this looks like the Nephites. <laughs> All right, back in that Mormon flow, man, Moroni flow, Kadarites, Kadar. Mm. The Benjamite component among them was named Sinim or Southlanders. So this is only referring to the Southlanders, and the Southlanders are connected with this Australia flow. But Australia is Antarctica. Yeah. And Antarctica is Tarazanta. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we already know Tarazanta means holy land. Jerusalem. I also wrote of an earlier medieval legend of the coming of an Eastern princess called Palomi or Tamu, Tamimu on a ship with her daughters to Spain as refugees from the disasters already beginning in Australia in that time in the 12th and 13th centuries. So these queens could have easily been coming from Australia, right? Australia, I keep saying Australia. Australia's <laughs> come on to Spain well all this is being conquered before the freeze over so Tammy Mu she's coming from the southerly continent 
to Spain as refugees of the disasters popping off in Antarctica, <laughs> beginning in Antarctica, Australia. <laughs> she began with her, the, the Zahor, and Moses de Leon was one of her descendants, as well as King Ferdinand. Now, who's Moses de Leon? <laughs> the famous medieval tales of swan ships that we just got, right? Swan knights, barbars. Arriving in Europe at the time of Charlemagne is connected to the South Southern Empire that included the Americas and Australia and Tara Zancta. Holy Land. Yeah, it includes the Americas and Asia and Tara Zancta. This is where they had to go to connect. And what river is this? Are we just talking San Banya? And are these tribes in exile across the Terra de Fuego? This river that turns into fire on the Shabbat. Is this where they were? Connected with the gateway? It's a lot of good questions. So we're connecting the Southern Empire or Tarazanta or Australia or Antarctica with America, which was much bigger before a series of disasters sunk much into the sea. And we know Australia, even the small continent today, is still connected with the old Australia. They just can't tell you that that's Australia now. It got to be a frozen over Antarctica. <laughs> Now, let's, uh, last thing I'm going to get out this document here, man. So, you know, they got a lot more, man, but we're going to keep it flowing. Yeah, we're going to talk more about these Amor, man. Amor, Amor rights. Mm -hmm. Treaties on treaties. All right. So you got the Torah, right, in the script. She's one of the, um, the concubines of, of Abraham or whatnot. Now, son Midian. So she had a son named Midian. Okay. Found among the Kenites who joined the Israelites and dwelt with Judah. That matches the script because the Kenites are the... Uh, yeah, Medianites, <laughs> the Medes, Medianites, Kenites. Uh, these are the tribes of Reuel, Jethro, okay, who joined the Israelites as they did. Now you got a mixed multitude under Moshe, dwelt with Judah in the south, Negev. They were metal workers or miners. Some of them remained among the Jews and are the K found among the Safari Jews, right? They had their own priestly class, which later was included with the Levites. We're talking Moshe flow, right? Okay, another group of K, they're talking DNA, went to Australia to mine the gold, silver, and other precious metals and gems in the time of Solomon. They were known as the servants of Solomon and the Nathanim, Nathanim goldsmiths, as they remained in Western Australia with Prince Nathan and served the Davidic house of Nathan as gold miners and smiths. A group of these Kenite Nathanim with their Davidic Nathanite lords. <laughs> All right. Returned to Jerusalem. And they later became special servants in the second temple under Ezra and Nehemiah. They were also part of the temple police force <laughs> led by their Nethanite lords who, due to the resurrection and Pentecost, became Christians. Oh, man. That's the hijack. 
Now they're bringing the gospels in. I want to talk Dodies, man. Right quick, it says, uh, <laughs> all right. Now they want to bring in the Khazars. Let's go of the Ashkenazis. Now we know these are the seeds of Gomer. And I can't even confirm that these people are even that. I can't even give them the Ashkenazi title because, you know, they, they might be jacking that too today. <laughs> They're definitely not Judah. Some of K also left the southern continent with the Khazars of Manasseh and entered the Ashkenazi Jewish population with the Manassite and Benjamin Khazars. All right, you got to decipher that. <laughs> it would seem that the Benjamin kingdom was in the lands of the northeast of Australia that sunk into the sea, forcing many of the Benjamites to, Benjamites to go to the Americas, where they were already here. These K Kenites intermarried with the black descendants of Joktan, Eber, okay. We're talking Arab proper again, right? And this is one of the most common male haplogroups among Australian Aborigines. Jock time flow. They got that jock time flow. All right, all right. And I definitely want to get back on the Queen Dinah because she's popping up all over the place. And Dinah is, you know, uh, the 13th patriarch, they say. You know what I'm saying? She's the sister of these 12 patriarchs of Israel. So, oh, here we go again with this white stuff, man. The last of the white Aboriginal kings. There ain't no such thing as a white Aboriginal, man. I just want to just lay it out there. There's no such thing as a white Aboriginal. Stop it. Of the Lake Austin area was solely moved. So maybe they just mean pure. Maybe they just mean pure. So the last pure Aboriginal king of the Lake Austin area was lit, was solely Mu. Same title that the Prest is rocking, right? Solely Prest the child. Solely Mu, who passed himself off as an Afghan camelier at Q in Western Australia called Suleiman Arcel Dean, the son of Dadu. So now they're putting the Mu title on David. They're putting the Mu title on Suleiman. Which also connects to these Jadarans and Cholas, Raja and Rajas. All this is Mu. Soli, Soliman, Mu. We're talking Lumeria and Mu, you know, back to the Moor, right? So we know we are Mu. We know we are part of this, this great, you know what I'm saying? This great land, this great Mu, right? But not everybody truly is, you know what I'm saying, holding down the frequency of the Mu code, the Mu bloodline. Some are invading and migrating with permissions of the pharaoh this atlantis was hijacking Mu. that's why they went to war what do you think the war was about same frequency wars today dragons versus serpents dragons versus snake dragon versus dog heads let's go we just warming up man we just warming up So Solimu called Solomon <laughs> is the son of David. So here we go again. Solomon is the son of David. And Alice, Queen Dini, Queen Dini, Dinah, was the daughter of Tammy or Tamil, huh? Like the Tamil dynasty. Back to the Cholas and, you know, Roger here Rogers and all that. So, TV, also known as Miuk or Mia or Atimu, High Queen of Mu. Now, they throw their moon in like they throw in their Africa. So, dodge your own hijack. Mu, 
<laughs> has a lot more to do than the moon. My God. We're talking about the land of moon. Con. Hi, queens. Shout out to my aqua. Shout out to the queens. Because while we are searching for the press, we are searching for our high queens. In the eighth, Tammy's mother, Queen Dini, or Danny, was the last of the aboriginal queens of the Talbot River area, who was wife to Jerong or Rong, the chief of or king of the Nungars. <laughs> Sound like the Nagas. <laughs> Dinah or Daninia and Jerome were the parents of Rabu, Dina or Dinah, whose son was King George. Jerome, Dinah, the colonial government recognized king of the Noongars. <laughs> king George became the colonial recognized king of the Noongars. But Dani, last of the aboriginals, they want to make her, they just want to put the white in. It's okay. It was the wife of Jerome, who is an actual king of these Noongars. But Juni or Dini and Jerome were the parents of Robu, who was the son of King George. Dinah the colonial king. So something happened where he became the colonial king recognized on King George Dinah's death in 1926. His son became King Robert Buford Dinah. In an official installation ceremony, he was the last of the government recognized Noongar kings and he died in 1962. So this is supposed to be kind of recent uh, Australian history, man. Still rocking the Dave, David or Dadu titles. Still rocking Solomon history. Or, you know, but they want to make them white now because maybe in 1923, they are white. <laughs> and by this time, they probably are white. By the 1900s, <laughs> straight up hijack. But like I said, they're rocking this Dold title. The Dodd family which is found among many Aboriginal groups in Western Australia, South Australia, the North Territory and Queensland are the remnants of the descendants of David. Davidic Kings, right? So this D-O-D-D -D is still David, the name Dodd coming from David or Dovid or Dawood or Dodu. Got you. Got you. Which is why you have David the first Dewey or Dodi. And even with the high Amazon queens, you see this Dodi title a whole lot. You see, uh, you know, Davida title and a lot of Gadi, Mani and Rubani's. Letting you know that it's all about the tribe, tribe. We're just talking Dodi, right? Dodd. Okay, I just wanted to get that. Let's go. Let's go, man. Let's go. Some of the Afghans in Australia in the 19th century were returning remnants from the tribe who had left in the 16th century for Afghanistan, Pakistan. We're talking the Benjamite Nakas, right? Many of the Dodd or David Dodd Dan families are descendants of Suleiman or Saldin or his father, King Parahu or Dodu or David or his grandfather, King Solu or Mihuk or Suleiman. Right. So now you see the Soli title. So Soli is the father of David. Again, Solomon has a son, David, the same way as we see here. Soli has a son, David. 
but his father is also carrying the title Soli or Sulima, who's also the father of another Sulima under the same Soli. But he's the first of the kings of Telmas, all in the family. Come. Come, come. Now I'm belly flopping back in this Kalelu, Septimania, Romano, Jewish Kingdom, Kalelus.blogspot.com, Israel the Red or Idwa, Ratri, We're talking Rhoda, right? Kalelus married Johanna, a daughter of Yurek or Eric, uh, Kadwaldir, Gwynedd. All these is e all this is Hebrew, my naga. All these are Hebrews. Afada was a daughter of King Elaine, Ur of Brittany, and his wife Johanna, the sister of Ahunai of the Holy Land, Makir, right? and Dulaith had a son, Daniel. Kuna. We're gonna talk a little Daniel. <laughs> All right. And look how they also have, have his name as Kana. C Y N A N. Kana. Or Hana. Let's go. King of Strathglide or Clyde, Brittany. He married Princess Mahawk, Matilda of Mead, a daughter of King Con Colbur. Holbur. Remember, Holbur is also Heber. Uh, we catching them now of Midi and Prince's land of Alik. All right, so they're going. I mean, you know, this ain't no play play when it comes to the many royal houses of the traditional Davidic descent. They sought to strengthen their Davidic status by intermarrying with the family of Ahunai, Judah, Zakai, and Makir. So they must have some strong royal lineages, Davidic lineages, if folks is trying to marry into their families. Makir defeated King Angus of Picts and Scots in 750. Right, could be back to this family war, back to this Kalelu's flow. While Makir was absent from Septimania in 750, Narbonne was once again attacked by Muslims and occupied. So, Back to Forbidden Histories of America. Let's just compare this right quick. In 775, Nehemiah Theodoric reconquered the American Empire of Kalelus. Now this Nehemiah, on the death of his father, Makir Theodoric, in 765 AD, Nehemiah Theodoric becomes becomes the Western Exilarch and leader of all the Hebrews of the revived Western Romani Empire of Charlemagne. Charlemagne, again, just meaning great king. And, you know, he calls himself David. <laughs> all right. Again, you got this Jewish king of Septimania, Theodorus. Also known as Ameri de Narbonne. Now, Narbonne is now attacked while he's over here <laughs> going head up with uh, Sylvanus to Texas. You know, in this family war, this Makir or Americ, Ameri, Ameri. This great warrior Davidic prince. You know, he's trying to get a hold of this holy land himself, right? Something's happening. The kingdom is being divided, possibly, after the days of King Solomon or Solomon the Builder. Now, this Makir, also known as Nehemiah, right? Makir, Theodore, Nehemiah. Nehemiah, gotcha. His father was also Makir, so that's a title. And he's going head up for this American empire. So while he's gone, his kingdom's being attacked by some Moors, right? So 
he is an Israel on Israel conflict. And then as they always do divide and conquer while we are fighting, they take it as a, they take an opportunity, right? They take an opportunity to attack. So let's go. While my kid, right? 750. So it says he defeated the king of Angus of Picts and Scots in 750. And then in 775, here it says he rose up on Kalelus. Okay. Okay. 25 year difference right here. You know, could be something, could be nothing. You know, could be the same year. <laughs> The Pick and Scots could be all this Sylvanus to Texas stuff as well in America, as far as we know. While Makir was absent from Septimania in 750, the, uh, Norban was again attacked by the Muslims and occupied. They are said to have tortured Makir's youngest son, Gilbert Gulbilin Goy Alberic Yakar, by crucifying him. I thought JC was getting crucify everybody getting crucified my kid's son his bond got crucified gilbert survived his ordeal and went on to become the count of rock rog so he survived the crucifixion man my kid returned to france in 752 to join king pepin in the siege of narbonne 759 pepin would elevate my care from being the duke of Septimania to being anointed the king of Septimania, he would die or abdicate around 765 and was succeeded by his son. Ah. So all that was the father, Makir, who defeated King Angus. Got it. And then he got slept upon by the Muslims, right? And in Forbidden Histories of America by Daniel Lowe, you got the father Makir, so on the death of his father Makir, right, that we just discussed, now Theodoric in 765, same day, he now becomes the Western Exilarch, the leader of all of Judah, could we talk in the Davidic princes on that side. And then, you know, they got to figure it out here as to, you know, are y'all keeping a code or are you not keeping a code? If you're not, you know, we're going to have to reestablish this American empire. Now, was this happening in 775 or a thousand years later in 1775, man? But what we do know is Makir's dad was going, you know, head up with these Islam Muslim situation or just more and more Moab situation, whatever was going on. His son, Theodoric Nehemiah, became the Davidic king of Septimania because King David always had the scepter. Makir on his second wife, Dule, had a daughter, Duni, and Bertrada. And in 768, Charlemagne, on succeeding his father, confirmed the Carolingian alliance with the king, Theodoric II Nehemiah. Amari, Amarica of Septimania. Sept means seven, seven cities of gold. Talking Shambhala, Shambhala. As king of Septimania, the son of King Theodoric, the first Makir. All right, Zuckerman and others confused the father and son who were both known as Theodoric. All right, all right. The second Jewish king or Hebrew Khan was to be the conqueror and king of Kalelus in America, as well as the ruler of Saxony and Bavaria. Kalelus in America, Managa means you copper color races found here are part of this kingdom. You got to wake up. It was seen that Makir's grandfather Ahonai of the Holy Land came to the West after his father-in-law, the Western or the the warrior exilarch Himan bin Shalom was killed. 
Heman was the exilarch of the Hebrews who had become who had become Muslims outwardly. So they converted. He was martyred around 660 AD. It is said the Jews of Pun Pedit, Pedita proclaim him the Messiah. Whoa. So just like you got people getting crucified, you got another Messiah being proclaimed in 645 AD. And he was known as the Messiah of Pun Pedita. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. I mean, they're giving all the drop. <laughs> they're giving all the drop. And I just want to pick it up from here with this, this letter here. It says, in the Sefer HaKabbalah, written by Abraham uh, ben Dau, son of Dau, in 1161. It says the King Charles, then King Charles, sent to the King of Baghdad, the Caliph, requesting that he dispatch one of his Jews of the seed of royalty of the house of David. So remember this, man, we, we briefly talked about it. So it sounded a lot like the Daniel flow, right? Who is the seed of David? through Abigail, like a reflection happening in 1161. And we said the book of Daniel could be written easily in the 1200s. The king, it says King Charles sent to Baghdad, right, Babylon, requesting that he dispatch one of the Hebrew, the, the seeds of Judah, right? Just like Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar needed the royal family he wanted the seed of the house of david right daniel chapter one <laughs> it's all happening and the king spoke unto ashpanaz his chief officer that he should bring in certain of the children of israel of the royal seed the seed royal <laughs> and the nobles youth in whom was no blemish, but fair to look on and skillful in all wisdom and skillful in knowledge and discerning in thought. This is during the Babylonian captivity, right? Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. We, we've been talking about Babylonian exilarchs the whole time. If we're talking David of Babylon, my nugget, and if this is happening in 1200s, 1300s, then why wouldn't this Babylon be happening around the same damn time? We're just talking Babylon and Georgia. <laughs> and Georgia. We're going to get back to the Bagratoni, Bagratini dynasties and all that. So Babylon, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar means Nebo, defend my boundaries so this is not the name of a person it could be anybody under the title nebo defend my boundaries like moab nebo or mount nebo in moab utah same nebo that moses you know went into suspended animation on. <laughs> so let's go okay for the dismount So is this all happening at the same time as what we are investigating, right? We have, you know, the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. And Hawah gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand and part of the vessels of the house of Hawah. And he carried them into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and the vessels he brought into the treasure house of his God. Then the king spoke to Ashpenaz, his chief officer, that he should bring in certain of the children of Israel, 
the seed, the royal seed, the seed royale and the nobles, the youth in <laughs> the youth of whom there is no blemish. Kiliab is his name, also known as Daniel, who was the second son of David, king of Israel. According to the Bible, he was David's son with his third wife, Abigail, widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. So this was the issue is that they didn't know when she was pregnant for sure if, because she was a widow if her son was David's or Nabal's. So Hawa arranged that Kiliab would resemble David perfectly. <laughs> it is possible his name Kiliab, which can be translated perfection of the father, is a reference to that legend. Daniel was one of three or four he may have died before his father, so he might have died before David. Later rabbinic traditions name him as one of four ancient Israelites who died without sin. Then Nebuchadnezzar asked for a youth without blemish, without sin. Further confirmation that that Daniel is the seed of David. David's second son. So Nebuchadnezzar literally, literally has David's bond, which is the most royal seed he can get when he's asking Ashpenaz, his chief officer, to bring in certain of the children of Israel. Of the seed royal means the house of Judah. Now we got Kilian who has no sin along with Benjamin, Jesse, David's dad, and Amram, Moses' pops. Another correlation between Moses and David, they both come from sinless, the loins of sinless men. You know, did Moses have sin? Did David have sin? These are debatable things, but they come from the loins of sinless men. And David's son is also a sinless naga, Kiliab or Daniel, who died without sin. Perfection of his father. <laughs> you know, good to look at, right? A handsome man, a handsome naga, right? The throne eventually passed to his younger half-brother, Solomon. So Solomon got the throne. David wasn't really tripping or Daniel wasn't really tripping, but we do read about this Daniel Alcum. He wasn't tripping Daniel because Daniel himself was raised up in the in Babylon, right? As an exilarch within the house of Nebuchadnezzar. But you have Anon or Solomon and these other brothers who are getting, you know, raised up by the tribe. You know, they're getting raised up not by the, you know, the hijacked conqueror Nebuchadnezzar, even though Daniel was righteously being raised up by Hawa, but you got David's brothers, you know what I'm saying? Or, uh, yeah, you know, David's sons, should I say, also fighting for power, just like the Mongol conflict. But Daniel, he's not asking for it. He just gets raised up, you know what I'm saying? But he ends up having his own, kind of sector of this, you know, carryism, they call it, you know, this Kara-ism. So we're talking to Kara Katai. Kara means black or melanated. So this is the melanated royal seeds. And this one had no sin. He's the bond of David. bring certain of the children of Israel and of the seed royal and of the nobles, right? So now we got David's bond being brought in to Nebuchadnezzar or Genghis Khan, 
who could also go under the title Nebo, defend my boundaries. And if Genghis Khan had David's son hostage, <laughs> wow, I mean, maybe this is what got him the victory. You know, maybe it was David didn't want nothing to happen to his bond. Maybe he stepped down. You know, we don't know. A youth without blemish, no blemish means no sin, right? <laughs> Killian, God. So Killian seems to be the character that's popping off here. David's son is the Daniel we're talking about. Is it the same Daniel L. Kuhn? We're going to talk about Daniel Kumisi for the dismount. Fair to look on, skillful in all wisdom, skillful in knowledge, and discerning in thought. And what's it got to do with this flow? <laughs> hey, we, we just been talking, you know, Davidic uh, exilarchs, right? The leaders of the Hebrews. Then King Charles sent the king of Baghdad, Caliph, requesting that he dispatch one of his Jews of the seed of royalty, the royal seed. Here we go again, of the house of David. Here comes Kilian. Now they're specific about it. Whereas in Daniel, they just said, royal seed, children of Israel. He's a noble. At least this translation. But now we're saying, yeah, he's the house of David, seed of royalty, house of David. He hearkened and sent him one from there, a magnate, a sage, Rabbi Makir by name. Whoa, so Makir is being sent in this story, not Kilib or Daniel. Phantoms and duplication. <laughs> and Charles settled him in Narbonne, the capital city, and planted him there and gave him a great possession there possession there at the time he captured it from the Ishmaelites not Arab proper pretending and he my care took to wife a woman from among the magnates of the town and the king made him a noble man so just like Daniel my care is being raised up in the house of the king of Baghdad or King Charles or Charlemagne, <laughs> or we're just talking Genghis Khan, who calls himself David, just like Charlemagne. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> and the king made him a noble man and designed out of love for Makir, or David, or Daniel, or Kilia, Good statutes for the benefit of all the Hebrews dwelling in the city as it is written and sealed in a Latin charter. And the seal of the king therein bears his name, Carlos. Sound like Kaleus? <laughs> hey, man. And it is in their possession at the present time. The Prince Makir became chief there. He and his descendants were close with the king and his descendants, just like Daniel was raised to be chief you know he was given all the you know um just like joseph you know was given all this authority even in the hijacked city it's like one of our our noggins being raised up to be president of the united states we thought we had it but uh yeah probably not not yet <laughs> let's go man these warrior Davidic princes in the early medieval period were prized by the Hebrews, Christians, and Muslims as their leaders because of their descent from King Dawi. It said they maintain their own mystical Jewish traditions. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, they're going to talk Merovingian drop? All right. It's a good place to, to belly flop, <laughs> continue to belly flop flow. And I want to do that. Uh, first of all, man, shout out to the bro, uh, UB News, man, you know, another great 
Skylar, man, like Cootie Mayo, like Templar, man, like Natural, like Yosef, like Night Spiral, like, like so many Nagas out there dropping that drop. Uh, you know, show them what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? Israel over here. That's what we're talking about. Kavera, Anya, all this flow. He put Egypt here. Now that's right near that Morocco flow, right? <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right. Babylon over here. Great Lakes. Yep. Yeah, so when you think Babylon, I said, when you think Babylon and Georgia, you know, it is Georgia, Atlantis, Atlanta, right? <laughs> Babylon is also right here. Hey, hey uh, my Nagas, man, y'all been dropping that drop, man, you know, keep it a Naga flowing and, you know, Continuing the flow as we pop off, press the 97 and, you know, 96, man. Y'all been leaving great comments. Oh, man, we got some new comments coming in as well. Love to Aqua Abiyya, Country Western. Says, hello, Hawaii, M-H-O-E, Katie. See, I know she's surfing away. Shabbata, we are hop, you can't drop and drop nation. Hey, M-H-O-E, makes multi two. You already know it. Hey, my bro, CJ Charles Johnson, peace, indigenous, Amaru Khan's a turtle island, what it do? Matt Mason says, I remember one of your older videos, you say Christopher Columbus was Christ of Ophir. So is this Ophir related to or the same territory connected with Christopher Columbus? Well, we're talking America, and I'm not sure Christopher actually has a territory, but He's hijacking America. He's hijacking Ofer. So they call him the Christ of Ofer. He said, haven't watched the whole video yet. So forgive me if you connect all the dots later on. Keep up the great AJ. Lay high, man. You, you ride on point. You surfing that wave in real time, in battle time. Leona Abba says, we inherently tap into the dragon fire. But then when we live on one accord, man, we KTC, we in that dragon flow. They keeping us divided while they try to tap in for their own purposes. That's a big con. Dur Juran said, try to sleep, but you're too interested. What a journey, man. Sleep, man. You know, I'll talk to your subconscious. I'll talk to your subconscious. Aqua Shamar, what it do? She says they feed off the dragon. Parallel. Aqua Shamar, Lady Roos, what it do? Oh, remember there, we're talking about eating them them um or summoning leviathan bro uh director raw shout out to the roots he said drop nation please if you see this you got to check it out been playing world of warcraft and it got a lot of gamer drop you know going on recently and this game is insane and death telling some kind of earth story long story short we got trolls <laughs> on world called Azura, AKA Earth. First of all, the trolls have a Jamaican, <laughs> Jamaican accent, they give away. <laughs> and they were the ancient founders of the entire land, et cetera, et cetera. Then there was a sundering that split their world apart into four continents. Previously, it was a singular supercontinent. <laughs> sundering happened when these troll descendants summoned a demon army through this thing called the well of eternity. We've been talking about Leviathans or, you know, whatever dragons they're trying to tap into in order to stop the demon invasion, they had to implode the well, which in turn sunk that city to the bottom of the ocean. Was Atlantis purposely sunk? Because they couldn't stop the portal they opened up. Ooh, wow. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Turned them into snake like monsters. Now they are serpents in Atlantis, a chemical serpent, dog heads. If this ain't sound like Atlantis, <laughs> yeah, then I don't know what else. Hop on that drop. Man. He dropped that drop in real time, man. We're going to hop on it. The great sundering. Yeah, my Nagas get the comments and press the 96. Love to direct to Ross. He also said that in Final Fantasy was that 15, they had 
the Leviathan priestess summoning the Leviathan in order to get some kind of ring for the prince. And they summon the primal Titan in order to subdue the Leviathan. And that reminds me. So first they summon Leviathan. Then they had to summon a Titan to subdue Leviathan because they, they magic can't subdue, uh, you know, this, this OG primal flow. You know what I'm saying? He said, it reminds me of the male female counterpart you were talking about. Plus it had to be a female priestess to connect with the power of Leviathan, maybe like a high Amazon queen. <laughs> and it's the prince who had the power of Titan at that time. So we had a balance. Hey, ha, hey, that was deep. Hey, ha, the bro, director Ross. Hey, get these links, my naga. Let's see what we got. Chickasaw rising. She said, class is in session. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Much respect, come for all you do. May Hawa increase you. May Allah Hawa to you. Oh, Hawa, Hawa, Brian Phillips. Need a video for this one. Oh, he's surfing away with the missing vibration, gaining vibration. Four, three, two hertz, five eyes, minds popping off. You got a new strudel we about to drop. Stay tuned up, my night. Luciana, what it do? 96, Tribe Nation, you are all that in real time. I'm so proud to be on this way. And this reminds me. Thank you, Aqua Luciana. My naga, this is one of the proudest moments of my life to dedicate all these years and all these hours with you. You know, like I said, the greatest investigation on YouTube ever <laughs> is Preston John and the Noble Ethiopian. Uh, and that's Ahab to all my nagas, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's contributing to this. It's not like me doing something that's above and beyond anybody. It's the tribe as a whole. I'm talking nine. I'm talking Cootie Mayo. I'm talking nine Spiral Yosef. I'm talking all the tribe, man, that's contributed. The Aquas type at Zion, man. Abiyya. Aqua Larissa, what it do? So many Aquas. I'm about to talk about Aqua Tracy Lett in a minute because I'm back in that, in that press the pack with Tracy Lett, man. <laughs> we in that press the pack too, Tracy Lett. But you should all feel proud, man, to hit press the 100, man. It's the road to 100, you know. You put in that work, you survived all that stuff you go through in your life. You came back here, still popping off, leaving these comments and dropping this drop like the bro. These type of links like this is what built up this investigation, man. So everybody should be proud of this wave. With you, the most high has truly given you knowledge and wisdom you are. Fire, all praise for why. Thank you, my beloved KTC for life. MHOE forever. That's what I'm, this is what keep me going, man. Luciana, hey, the water, the water. Now inspire already. I let go. Hey, we gone. We out of here, man. Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> we out of here. Temple R. Oh, man, we were talking about that IG, IG, I. He says they're artificial life forms created by the Anunnaki, a.k.a. Nephilim. Being that this is the new or northwest of Maxim, he didn't travel far because this is Hyboria. Ah. Hey, go get that drop in 96. Jerusalem, they say, is around New York, Connecticut, and their holy mountain is around Chicago. That said, Noble talking about Noble Drew Ali, is admitting that these mounds, pyramids throughout the Ohio Valley are mass grave sites of their making, ritual killings. Whoa. Heavy, super heavy weight. Five eyes, my, you already know what time it is. We got to recon this, man. So Ahab Templar, Irvin Reed, House of Red, man. Um, so Noble Drew Ali is admitting that these mounds or pyramids throughout the Ohio Valley more are being uncovered in Louisiana, Manai, are mass grave sites of their making. We're talking to more and more war, ritual killings of the indigenous kind, Aboriginal American Negro. Look at the dates. We talked, we talking what happened after the fall of the Kum, say, Psalms 83. 
That's a lot to dig on, Templar. That's a lot to dig on. D. Christian said, Elder God sound like the Mortal Kombat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a fact. Something always told me Mortal Kombat is real. A hey, free Phineas, man. It would appear that Leviathan was first and Phineas is the last, a.k.a. Bruce Leroy. Got it. Are these the separate accounts of how Leviathan had been sacrificed from their point of view? Managa, your comments keep me going, keep us going. So don't stop the drop. I like to get back to them as soon as I can, you know what I mean? But mostly I just read them and I just keep popping off. So the water you for this, for allowing us to pop off in real time, man, in battle time. Now, what I tell you, man, I, I mean, the Aqua, you know, Tracy led has been doing so much and I'm, I'm about to do a dismount with her, her, you know, great time and energy or hard work. You know what I'm saying? Stay tuned right after press the John 100, <laughs> all the updates will start happening back on the site. I should be good for next week to pop off the season premiere, the fifth wave live at 432, the drop radio where you can come over here, click the listen live and, Enjoy the live shows coming every week. So the WADA, Ether Squad, we appreciate you, you know, for your flexibility, bearing with me while I finish Preston John 100, <laughs> and I'll be ready to come in fresh and hot. I'm, I'm going hot. I'm going hard this week. So I'm going to try to, you know, get to 100 this week. But I'm doing my best. If not, we'll get it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, drop is over here, you know, getting it in for a night. Five o'clock in the morning, team no sleep. Let's get it, man. <laughs> hey, my nog is popping off for Joy World, man. And like I said, this is where you'll come. You'll get your radio shows, Five Eyes Mind, Yosef the Real, you know, Fifth Wave, we up, Natural by Law, TDR, uh, Nine Spiral popping off, you know this. Templar and Reed popping off, you know this. <laughs> and please, uh, you know this, man. Help us reach 20,000 now to complete this project. My Nagas ain't stopped the drop. And what we're doing with this information, we're building the straightest fence, most level fence Utah has ever seen <laughs> on an entire acre of land. Welcome to Joy World. What goes in our fence? Blue, purple, red, white linen, gold thread, allow why. Let's get our dismount. For the dismount, I just want to get on our Antioch flow, get back in this, uh, Vancouver British Museum or <laughs> British, uh, you know, whatever they call it, British Columbia, yeah. <laughs> the Lost Kingdom of Antioch. So we're just digging on some maps of the 1500s, some things like this and things like that. I just want to let's get it back to page one or maybe pick it up from here. All right. Lost Kingdom of Antioch, the mystery of the ancient British Columbia, alternate history, they call it. Okay. I just want to show you that they're calling it an alternate history. They're not even claiming this as, you know, the story because they can't do that, right? They got to be alternate. <laughs> so they're going to start off with some maps. We're going to look at that. It's talking about the origin of the name Antioch, which we got a piece of that before. They really don't know. Captain Cook, just like Captain Hook, right? Or Captain James Kirk of the Star Trek Enterprise. Yeah, man. Yeah, we see you. We see you, man. Yeah, you know, another great map to look at. A lot of great maps. That's 1813, okay. Let me get this intro right here real quick. There's a mystery. Oh, yeah, we all into mysteries. About British Columbia, Canada, a historical mystery that is almost completely forgotten in time. A mystery that is just as significant as any other mystery in our past. No one remembers the story of ancient British Columbia. And we are not taught about it in history class for 
from a time not long ago. The prehistory of British Columbia is only remembered in the mythical stories of the First Nations people or explained away in geological constructs of the 1000s or thousands of years. Only 500 years ago, in a time before the Hudson Bay Company, we talked about these treaties, came to kill animals for their fur, and the land was given the first English name of New Caledonia before the Spanish sailed along the Pacific coast for slaughter and conquest, and not long before any European came to conquer the New World for king and country to name it America. Even before Columbus supposedly set sail in 1492, supposedly, <laughs> there was a kingdom already established within the mountains of British Columbia. <laughs> Inscribed on all the oldest maps and spoken in history books written by respected historians. Oops, let me get back. Let me get it back. Matter of fact, let me decrease some of this magnetism here, this magnification. As long as we can see it. All right, cool. Let's get it right here. So we can go quickly. All right. So inscribed on all the oldest maps and spoken about in history books written by respected historians over hundreds, hundreds years ago, over a hundred years ago, the mysterious kingdom of Anion Regnum was shown to have been here. All the explorers of old searched for it and those who came hunting for gold after them knew of it. So this Anion, just like Covera, has everything to do with gold, cities of gold. Solomon's gold, Montezuma's gold, 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 promised land gold. All the explorers of old searched for, and those who came hunting for gold after them knew of it, but the knowledge of this lost kingdom is now completely disregarded and ridiculed as mythology, if not completely forgotten by mainstream historians, only fragmented. References can be made about this enigmatic place today. Could it be possible that the lost civilization of Anion Regnum did exist within the mountains of British Columbia, Canada, Canada, before it was British Columbia, similar to other mysteries and lost places in our past, like Atlantis. You see how all this comes together. Cities of gold, Atlantis, Mu, El Dorado, Mount Roraima, <laughs> trees of life, Eden, Orinoco flow, paradise, right? Kalelus, Camelot, or Troy. Might we begin to resurrect this mysterious place from not so long ago by assembling the fragments of our recorded annals of history and find the lost civilization of Anion Regno. We're talking Anon, Anon Ben Dawi. Origin of the name Anion, all right? Anion, Welsh word, all this is Hebrew flow with roots into the Celtic. All this is Hebrew flow, meaning nature, temperament, and power, powerful nature, and not of a powerful nature, and not regnum. We're talking kingdom, right? Take their kingdoms, take their dominions. Papa Bull, 1452, let's go for the dismount, greatest dismount of all time. Let's get it. Author R. Ropes on page 92 and 93 in this article, Early Explorations of America, Real or Imagined, wrote this about the origins of the name Anion Regnum. The derivation of the word Anion is obscure, so they don't know. They say nature, powerful nature, that's the best they're going to get. But it seems to have come from some name given to the extreme northeast part of Asia, which <laughs> where is Asia, right? So... All right, let's see what they're saying. And this name has been vaguely ascribed to Marco Polo. 
that the title first appeared on the Asiatic side of the strait, though it afterwards settled on the other, is almost certain. So they're going to say its origins with Anan and then became Ania, but we know we're just talking Anna or Arna. This mythical bordering river, you know, you know, always serving as this border, you know, when it comes to Moab and then Anna. Uh, Anan Ben David. Here we go with Genie again, founder of Anan. Yeah. Kari is like the Kara Qatar. They want to put him in Iran, 700s, right? Back to Kalelus. <laughs> Back to that flow so they can't run from us. We got Forbidden Histories of America in the 700s. You can't run from us. We're talking Anan. So we're talking Anaya. We're talking Anya. Ah. Is this just Anna, right? <laughs> Son of David. Who in 770 did what? He wrote the code, the book of precepts. He wrote the law. This carry it flow, this Babylonian exile flow again, right? Here we go again. Anon, son of David. You know, all this is named after us, Managa. You got Anon, you got Preston John, <laughs> you got Cathay, or just Kata, or Katan, Jokta, the Yucatan, Mexico, Meshi, Moshe. It's all here and it's all happening. It's all here and it's all happening. No matter what side they put it on, Marco Polo side, this side, that side, it's all Asia. It's all Asia. And they're really trying to figure out what this name means. They got the Regnum Naim, northeast of the Great Khan's Domain, subsequent transposition into Anion. It's not unlikely but they don't know <laughs> they don't know boss they're trying to figure it out but we got the anon ben david connection so on these maps you got the anon regnum and you've seen a few of these like this one here with the anion on it We got lots of others like this with the Adion on it as well. Oh, I was already there, man. I was already there, man. <laughs> All right, because the Anion became the Arnon. So now when you look up anything Anion, they switched all Anions, go get that drop <laughs> to Arnon. And first mentioned in Numbers 21, 24, as the border between Moab and Amorites. But we're just talking Anion. Okay. Even on this David Rumsey flow, we found Annie uh, right where it should be, right where it should be. We found the mythical Stretto de Annie, right? And then we find Cavera too, Eber, Kieber. See, Preston John is the con of the entire earth plane and is he the Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Someone left a great comment about the Lord of the Rings. So you got these rings. Again, no ice wall, right? Just land and pop offness and things happening and animals and stuff, right? Terra Fuego. 
It's a very important place of connectivity here. Very important spot. Because from here, you can go right through. You can go right through, man. You can, <laughs> you can travel right through South America. Right through. Right through Terra Santa, right? We got a lot more to dig on on this uh, great document here called The Mythical Straits of Antioch. And that's where this Preston map we got came out of where he said, that this map placed Preston John not far from his idolatrous neighbors, which we know we're talking Moab and them, not very far from Mexico, because Moab was always stuck to Judah, always stuck close to Israel. Amorites, they're always stuck to our side bone. 1530s again, some cataclysm happened, right? Outline of the MS map of the British Museum showing connections between Marco Polo's Ania or Asia. Love the tie battle, one letter rule, <laughs> Ania, Asia, <laughs> and the new lands. So Ania is popping up all over the place. Another great doc will dig on more, the Strait of Ania, right out the Canadian Encyclopedia. Right now we're talking about British Canada or British Columbia, Vancouver. Who's this James Cook and what's he got to do with Captain Hook? <laughs> Captain James Hook or Captain Kerr of the Star Trek Enterprise. Taking voyages across the Northwest Passage. Narrow and crooked Strait of Antioch, separating America from Asia. The Strait grew in Europeans' imagination as an easy sea lane linking Europe with the residents of the great Khan and Cathay or China. Come on, man. So this is Lincoln, America and China, right? Cathay, Annie Regna. How many maps you need to see <laughs> to know it's all happening in America? All right. And we got to look at all these explorers and how they explore in Antioch. The stray grew in European imagination as an easy sea lane linking Europe with the great con. It said, not even America, but Europe with the great con. So. That means <laughs> and again, love to my bro, uh, more Aboriginal man, sharing his drop and just dropping it and continuing to connect the flow. Managa, if this, if this is linking Europe to the Khan, that means they're talking about Europe this way, linking through Asia to Preston John's land, which is North America, the land of the Khan. Khan. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, we're just talking to Annie, uh, man. First Nations of British Columbia have a narrative in the story of Annie Young Regnum, and I would be remiss not to include them in my search for the Lost Kingdom. There are 198 distinct ethnic First Nations group in BC, a third of all First Nations in Canada, and they have the greatest diversity of cultures with seven of Canada's 11 unique language families. Okay. They, they, you know, they bringing in some yeah, I don't know which First Nations they are, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's case by case. I would never dispute the fact that the First Nations of British Columbia have lived in harmony with this land for 14,000 years. In fact, I would say in light of the knowledge of Annie and Regnum, the heritage of these cultural, culturally unique people may be greater than anyone could have possibly imagined. We ain't talking about 
you know, who they're giving us as a proxy of First Nations. My nigga, I'm talking about the Copper Color Cons, the Canada, the Con in Canada, the Copper Color Cons, American definition of a the definition of an American in 1828 is the Copper Color Con. Foul here. We know we're talking about the Naga. You know we're talking about the Naga when you talk about Lost Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. The next time we'll pick right up here in this Fusang drop. I'm just making a nice, you know, continuation into this Antioch flow. And just looking at this Fusang is pretty quick. Let's get it right quick. The written history of the Pacific Northwest Coast begins with a story that's little more than historical footnote in the year 458 AD, a 1,000, a 1,000 years, <laughs> a thousand years before the European explorer arrived in the New World, a Chinese monk by the name of Hua Shan, accompanied by four other monks, sailed north to Japan and the Kamkata Peninsula, then continued east to modern-day Alaska and south along the Pacific coast. He calls this area Fusang, referring to the Chinese mythological tree, the mulberry tree, which is said to be in the east where the sun rises. Each morning, the sun is said to rise from Fusang and fall. All right. Come on, man. Rise and fall <laughs> on Romu, Romu, R O U M U, back to the move flow. You know, back to this Amazon flow where Huan Shan describes some fantastical things such as a strange kingdom of women whose inhabitants were half human and breastless, man. <laughs> Come on. Man. The Spanish explorers 1,000 years later began searching for seven cities of gold. <laughs> cities of gold, man. Septimania, America, and a race of three-breasted women. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Again, look at this map, this Chinese map from 1421. Get it bigger. There's a few great maps here, man. We saw this a while back. But are you on the east or the west? That way, is America on the east or the west? And does North America exist? Or are we just talking? India superior, my like age. But notice that you're on the east, according to the Chinese in the 1400s, 70 years before Columbus. You are on the east. They came to the far east to find you, my naga, to find us, my naga. And Ania. <laughs> so, Kanka, Ania, you know what I mean? Hey. For the triple trifecta dismount, a hey, to my aqua, man. I got to get my aqua. This great dismount here. My aqua, Tracy led again. She, she went through and made PDFs of many, if not most, <laughs> of, our, of our drops. You know what I'm saying? Stuff that we could have forgot or stuff that we could have lost or could have got taken down. She PDFed all of it, man. All of it, man. We got the Hong Kong drops. We got stuff I forgot about that I pulled up. So I went through it and pulled up a few. Uh, if you get the Presto Pack 2, you'll see it on here. Uh, all of Tracy Let's drops. It's going to be called the Drop PDFs. We'll be on Presto Pack 2. And she has all the Antion maps on here. All these are PDFs, man. Atlantis, Flow, Avalon Project. Huge project, <laughs> Babylonian or Barbary treaties. And, oh, she got the Tadula flow. Oh, man. See, everything I was looking for, I was like, man, I don't even know 
where to start to even find it. But my aqua, she already got the PDF, so <sighs> I'm just so proud of you, uh, aqua, for taking this time. I mean, you, you, you don't know how happy I am, man, to <laughs> serve to wave and and this work that you put in. You know, what I'm saying to make sure we, you know, compartmentalize our flow right, and you know, make it easier to surf and all that. So I'm putting it on press to pack too for my Nagas that want to surf the wave with ease, man. I mean, ease. I remember a uh, Daniel or David flow and this Benjamin of Tadula drive, pretty amazing flow. You know what I mean? If we don't see it now, we'll get it next time for sure, but I'm belly flopping as we like to do around this time for the dismount, man. It's the belly flop season. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of drop in the Benjamin of to do. These are all, you know, ancient documents, man, that correspond with this David Priest King flow. A lot happening in this Babylonian flow right here. Awesome. I'm just belly flopping and some stuff, man. <laughs> belly flopping. They talk about King David, man. They're connecting it with a much more, you know, much closer timeline than they would normally do. Yeah, my wave servers already know what I'm looking for, man. Where David uh, turned invisible and started walking on water. <laughs> and we said, did you know David walked on water? <laughs> oh, man. My nagas know what it is, but it's in here. It's in this link. I said, David is walking on water, man. I'm out of here, man. <laughs> All these miracles, man, are just reflections, phantoms, and duplications of what that we already been popping off on. Oh, man. Oh, Dad, I'm going I'm to I'm take my time with it. I'm going to look through it. It's probably best because, you know, I know it's a whole lot of drop. I know we didn't get all this drop before. But Tracy let, you know, let us know that, uh, hey, these these drops ain't going nowhere, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, we don't have to worry about losing them no more, man. We got the PDFs, and we got them on the press to packs, you know what I'm saying, which is the beautiful thing. That's our time capsule. So, you know, you can make copies of it, make copies of all this stuff, man, and you have it before they destroy everything off the internet, which you already know is coming. You see, you know, you... You know how the game is played. You race, you race, you race. It's all Hijack City do. Yeah, man. Let me find this David turning invisible. I think he had a ring. Oh, man. It was some good drop in here. It's amazing when you belly flop, man. I mean, you know, I found something else. You know, I'll find the other one later. But, you know, back to this Daniel flow. I remember, you know, it said Daniel might have died before David. But, you know, now it's talking about in front of one of the synagogues of the scepter of Daniel of blessed memory, the river Tigris divides the city and the bridge connects the two parts on one side where the Jews dwell is the scepter of Daniel. Here the marketplaces used to be containing great stores, merchandise, by which the Jews became enriched. So, you know, 
talking about the coffin of Daniel should be taken for one year to one side and for another year to the other side. So, you know, just first I've ever read about the sepulchre, sepulchre of Daniel, the coffin of Daniel. King of Persia saw that they took the coffin of Daniel from one side of the river to the other. And the great multitude of Jews, Mohammedans and Gentiles, and many people from the country were crossing the bridge. He has the meaning of the proceeding. And they told him these things. He said, it is not meet to do this ignominy unto Daniel the prophet, but I command you to measure the bridge from both sides and to take the coffin of Daniel and place it inside another coffin of crystal. What? <laughs> so that the wood coffin be within that of the crystal and to suspend this from the middle of the bridge by a chain of iron. At this spot, you must build a synagogue for all comers so that whoever wishes to pray there, be he Jew or Gentile, may do so. This is crazy talk, man. <laughs> and to this very day, the coffin is suspended from the bridge and the king commanded that out of respect for Daniel, no fisherman should catch fish within a mile above or below the bridge. See, Daniel, man, love to the temple law, man, you know, uh, has a very strong flow, you know, and oh man, oh man, we belly flop. Oh man, we belly flop into David walking on water for the dismount. Love to Tracy led, like I said, Tracy got all of us organized. All, th all this is um, alphabetical too. And this is just, uh, she got the Daniel Al Kumisi. We pulled some of this up for the dismount. She got the Dijal. We pulled some of this up with the dismount and all these genie flows and Grammy Hancocks. And then she got a whole nother set of PDFs here, man. Now uh, we got the P.T. Barnum Phineas burning up in the museum. <laughs> all these maps, my naga. She got so much drive. Anatoly Fermenko, chronology, antediluvian, this and that. <laughs> Hey, with my, my, my Aqua Tracy got it all happening for us in real time. Camelot. Yeah, we got some King Arthur flow going on in a little light. Okay. Killian flow. We talking Killian, man, for the dismount. So, hey, hey, hi, Aqua. Right now we're looking in this Benjamin Tadula for the dismount. Best dismount of all time. I said best dismount of all time. Let's get it. So Daniel's been placed in a crystal. Con, con. <laughs> I can't make this up. Daniel's being placed in the crystal. Okay. Then it takes three days to Rudbar, where there are about 20,000 Israelites, and among them are learned rich men. And the Hebrews there live under great oppression. This is two days to Nahawan, where there are 4,000 Israelites. This, thence, it is four days to the land of Malahid. Here live a people who do not profess the Muhammad religion. Muhammadan religion became Islam, which that's why we say the birth of Islam, because it wasn't Islam then, it was the Muhammadan religion. Straight up paganism throwing stones to Mercurius, but live on a high mountain and worship the old man of the land of Hashishim. So what old man are they worshiping? Are they worshiping or are they, or is it a prophet of theirs? Same way they say Kitsukoto was worshiped. Was he worshiped or is it a veneration? Like, a, is he being held up or honored like a Moses? You know what I'm saying? All right, they popping off. Now let's pick it up from here. At this place, Amadia, Amadia, there arose this day, 10 years ago, a man named David, Al Roy. El Roy is the king of the city, Amadia. <laughs> he studied under his die, the head of captivity, under the head of the academy or academy of John Jacob in the city of Baghdad. 
He was well versed in the law of Israel, the Hala and the Halakha, as well as the Tamu. And in all the wisdom of the Mohammedans and in secular literature, writings of magicians, soothsayers, he conceived the idea of rebelling against the king of Persia. He wanted to rebel against the hijack and of collecting the Hebrews who lived in the mountains of Chaftan and to go forth and to fight. He's, he's on his Tecumse flow against all nations <laughs> and to march and capture or recapture the promised land, Jerusalem. He showed signs by pretending, he showed signs by pretended miracles to the Jews. How you know they were pretending? <laughs> he showed signs like JC. It's got a lot of JC flow for the dismount. <laughs> and the Holy One, this is David though, David L. Roy, David the King. He's doing miracles. The Holy One, blessed be he, sent me to capture Jerusalem and to free you from the yoke of the Gentiles. So he's like on his Moses flow. And the Jews believed in him and called him their Messiah. He's called Messiah like Mashiach, like their JC, right? <laughs> when the king of Persia heard of it, he sent for him to come and speak with them. El Roy went to him without fear. And when he had an audience with the king and later asked him, are thou the king of the Jews? Just like it said on JC's cross, right? King of the Jews, let's go. He answered, I am, I am the king of the, of the Nagas. <laughs> then the king was wroth and commanded that he should be seized and placed in prison of the king and the place where the king's prisoners were bound until the day of their death. So he was sentenced to death, just like JC, in the city of Taboristan, which is on the land, on a large river, goes on at the end of three days. So in three days, he raised from the dead because he was sentenced to death. Three days later, my Nagi, while the king was sitting, deliberating with his princes concerning the Hebrews who had rebelled, David suddenly stood before him. So in three days, he broke himself out of jail. <laughs> he was sentenced to death. He was sentenced to death. <laughs> I can't make this up. Three days later, he comes back to life like JC. <laughs> he stands in front of the king. He stood before him. He had escaped from prison without knowledge of any of, of any man, without the knowledge of any man. And when the king saw him, he said to him, who brought you here? Who has released you? He said, my own wisdom and skill, mama <laughs> gave me the drop, answered the other. For I am not afraid of you nor any of your servants. The king forthwith loudly bade his servants to seize David, but they said, we cannot see any man, he went invisible, my naga. We cannot see David, although our ears hear him. Then the king and all the princes marveled at his subtlety, subtlety, his wisdom. So he turned invisible. Probably had that magic ring, like I said, in the kingdom of President John and Shambhala. We'll get on the Shambhala flow next time again. He goes invisible. They say, we cannot see any man, although our ears hear him. Then the king and all the princes marveled at his wisdom. But he said to the king, I will go my way. So he says it, <laughs> but they can't see him, but they hear his voice. I will go my way. So he went forth and the king went after him. And the princes and the servants followed their king until they came to the riverside, just like Egypt, just like Moses, right? Then Elroy, Elroy took off his mantle and spread it on the face of the water. Mantle like his scarf, right? He spread it on the face of the water, Managa, to cross it. He started walking on water. When the servants of the king saw that he crossed the water on his mantle, they persuaded him and pursued him in small boats, wishing to bring him back. But they were unable, and they said, there is no wizard. <laughs> He's being called a wizard now. There is no wizard like this in the whole world. You're talking about King David. Managa, the, the magicians of Persia, 
the king's servants are looking at this and they say, we've never seen nothing like this, boss. <laughs> there is no wizard like this in the whole world. That self same day, he went on a journey of 10 days in the city of Ahmadiyya by the strength of the ineffable name. We're talking Hawa, Hawa. And he told the Hebrews all that had befallen him, and they were astonished at his wisdom. King of the Jews, King David, David Al Roy goes invisible, says, I will go by my, I will go my way. And then what he crosses the water on his mantle or he walks on water, my nagi, after being raised from the dead in three days. If this ain't no typology, I don't know what it is, man. We're just talking to wisdom. You see, David is the head of the exile. He's an exilar. Yeah. Head of the captivity and head of the academy, John Jacob, sent to El Roy saying the time of redemption is not yet arrived. We have not yet seen the signs thereof, for by strength shall no man prevail. Nor our mandate is, now our mandate is that thou cease from these designs, or thou shalt surely be as communicated from all Israel. So now he's going against his own people. Then the congregations of the land of Persia were in great trouble. It says, after the king of Persia sent word to Emir al-Mamun, Muminin, the caliph of the Mohammedans of Baghdad, urging him to warn the head of the exile, John, Jacob, to restrain David from, ex from executing his designs. So this caliph of Muhammad called, made a call to the head of the exile of Israel to restrain David from popping off because he wanted to free his people. And a vassal of the king of Persia who sent to the father-in-law of David gave him a bribe of 10,000 gold pieces to slay David in secret, my life. They've always wanted to slay the Mashiach. And again, love the Tracy Lad. I got all these drops up from Tracy Lad, man. We talked about the Rabadi Gadi Imani. There's also Judah the first. <laughs> Raiden, like Raiden, Mortal Kombat. Are we back to the Mortal Kombat flow? Elder guys, let's go. <laughs> King of Ubadi Gadi Imani, Raiden, man. Okay, Judah the first. He's the son of Solomon the second. <laughs> Raiden King, just like Mortal Kombat. Wow. Father of Joseph, Rubadi Gadi Imani. Let's go. You got Kilib, Daniel, also in Genie. And they want to throw him back a thousand. Man, look at this, a thousand BC. But if you add 1800 years, like Franco tells us to do, you're back to 800 AD, back to the Kalelu's flow, back to the Anam Ben David flow. You're right back in the thick of things. But you're just talking Kilib, even with a K, even with a K who's the son of King David of Israel, letting you know more confirmation, validation, that Kiliab, Daniel, is the son of David. And Abigail, just like it said, perfection of the father. Is he the same son of David, royal seed, that Nebuchadnezzar, you know, sent for and had in captivity with Michelle and Abednego and all that? Huh? Did... Genghis Khan have David's bond in captivity? Let's go. Talking Daniel Al Kun. Kun means to rise. Is this David's bond? 
Look at the date now, 946. <laughs> this is 900 BC. And now we're in 900 AD. Talking chariots and Judaism, man. So <sighs> prominent early scholar, Kari of Judaism, and we're talking the Hebrew Khans and Exilarchs. Flores at the end of the ninth or at the beginning of the 10th century was a native of Damagan, the capital of the province of Kumis in the former state of Tabaristan, as it is shown by his two surnames, the latter of which is found only in Kirkasani. His attitude to a non-Ben David and his violent opposition to the Ananites. So he was against something that a non you know, it was a code issue they were having. Our characteristics of his place in Carryism. So he was a rebel. <laughs> he was a rebel. Was he, was he the same one Nebuchadnezzar is raising up? We're going to get more on the book of Daniel, but, you know, we see how this correlates. We've seen how it correlates. What was he opposing with the Ananites? We got a piece of this a long time ago. And who's this Kirk Asani? Got to look that up. At first, he esteemed Anand highly as chief of the scholars, but later he despised them, called him chief of the fools. What happened in this brotherhood? You know, these are Davidic cons, sons of David. What's going on and how does this match up with Israel and the script? We'll be back. <laughs> Daniel Kumisi could be spelled with a K or a Q, right? K or a Q. Kariot settlement in the Holy Land under the, le the leadership of Daniel Kum. Easy. They say Kwam, but it's cool. Like, come, like, come here. Cool. Rise. The Kariot settlement prospered in the Holy Land. Under David or Daniel. Did it prosper under Daniel? You know, when he was raised up by Nebuchadnezzar. Cyrus in them, right? Did Israel prosper? Because of the favor of Daniel and prove you know, him proving Hawa, proving that Hawa is the only power, the only power. Carry it, Kara, Kara, Kata, settlement, prospered in the Holy Land from which it spread, <coughs> Shalak, like as far as the northwestern Africa and Christian Spain, a barrage of carry it treatises, treaties. <laughs> presenting new views of scriptural exegesis, stimulated, renewed study of the Bible and the Hebrew language. And this is what we're doing. We have a renewed study of the script, Managa, and the Hebrew language. This is all we're doing is renewing our study to study and show ourselves approved. And we will be back talking about this Dajjal flow. Because when we talk Mohammedans and Islam, they have a character like the Antichrist <laughs> that they call the great deceiver. The prophet was warning us that in, in the last days, there would be someone who would deceive all humanity. So to them, King David being raised up is deceiving all humanity because David was fighting the Mohammedans the whole time. Of course, he's the Dajjal. Of course, he's your Dajjal. David is fighting Zeus the whole time. Of course, he's your antichrist in Christianity. Of course, he's your Dajjal. We see the link between the Christians and the Muslims. Y'all got the same enemy. The antichrist of Christianity is the antichrist of Islam, is King David. The Dajjal will possess power over this world. Thus, Muslims must be careful not to have the love of the world in their hearts. So they won't love to leave their religion. So knowing about Preston John might make these Moors leave their Muhammad. 
You know what I'm saying? So they're warning about him and calling him Antichrist, learning about King David rising. Hosea 3 and 5, searching for David, might make these Christians stop thinking about Jesus like that. <laughs> and they might return to Hawa. So David is called the Antichrist in both religions because he's the truth and the truth shall set you free. He will be able to heal the sick by wiping his hand on him like Jesus did. <laughs> Phantoms, duplications. But with the deceit, the Dajjal will lead people down the path to hell. Thus, the, the Dajjal is the false messiah or anti-cross. Anti their Christ, anti their anointed. Who's their anointed? He will pretend to be the messiah and deceive people by showing them amazing powers like dragons. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, yeah, they say Dajjal is blind of left eye with thick hair, and there will be a garden and fire with him, and his fire, dragon fire, will be a garden, and a garden will be a fire. This is where you're getting their Kofar al Tarak. Kofar is a derogatory term meaning infidel, unbeliever. So he's the Kafir, the unbelieving one, because huh? he don't believe in your Muhammad. He don't believe in your tenets of Islam. He believes in restoring Jerusalem, restoring the holy city that Columbus came to conquer. Restoring the promised land. They say the jaw is blind of his left eye, my man. Yeah. That's what they saying, boss. Well, for the dismount. <laughs> Who's the Lord of the Rings, man? <laughs> who's going invisible, turning invisible on these noggins, <laughs> walking on water. And look, they even made the press the blind in one eye. <laughs> but this is the right eye. Uh oh, they got it wrong. They got it wrong. <laughs> All praise of Wild Monaga. You've been surfing the wave in the 97th installment of the Presta John investigation on the road to Presta One. I know. Continue to surf the way. Surf the way, cause we talking meteor showers. <laughs> we talking meteors thrown from the clouds with such violence that by collision it set on fire. That's that Dijon flow, God. Huh? That's the alchemical dragon against the impersonal nature of the alchemical serpent who brings everything to life, but also kills everything. Trying to extract the life from the dragon. This is how you know alchemy, study of this energy, the flow. There's a separation between the serpent and the dragon, two different things. The dragon is not the serpent. Not the serpent in the garden. The dragon is who is, you know, giving them this living spirit. They are extracting. They are extracting the living spirit. The vessel that the spirit is contained, they are summoning Leviathan to extract the life against accidents of old age. I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Serpents or dragons, man. And who's the dragon in the garden? Well, you know. We talked about Genesis 13 last time.
Oh, Leviathan. We talked about how they summoned in Leviathan. Because Sawa could put a rope in his nose, pierce his jaw with a hook. They're trying to do it with spells and incantations. They said, will he make a covenant with you? They think they can make a covenant with old Levi, huh? Con, con. Is the serpent a dragon in Genesis 2? <laughs> Back to Genesis 3, Shalai, Genesis 3. Because you have done this, cursed are you above all cattle and above all wild animals. Upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. So what was this serpent doing before he was told to only be on his belly? Was he jumping, running, skipping? Or was he a flying dragon? Therefore, prior to this curse, the serpent was not crawling on his belly. This means the serpent had arms and legs. What do you call a serpent with arms and legs? A dragon. <laughs> hey, we popping off, man. Surfing the wave with the tribe, tribe. For Nagaville for joy world the water to the code keepers david a the water to you the nereus chief stand still the water to you my nag is doing it for the tribe tribe bless up fam keep grinding and growing all praises to the creator of the spirits of all flesh hey this is how we feel it man for naga for joy world we ain't gonna stop we're gonna keep the drop going keep the drop flowing hey even behind the ice wall man <laughs> hey it's Preston john the uh you know is, is this the lord of the rings that they talk about love to the family that been dropping all that i mean is Preston john who they might call, who they might call the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I think there's one power, my naga, that that's Hawaii's order. Y'all y'all think the hijack runs everything? <laughs> you think they're that powerful, man? We know it's a more and more war, man. Gang is kind of depicted as a black man. 1883's V.S. Smirnoff. Gang is kind of depicted as a black man. This is what we talking about. This is what we was up against, man. <laughs> Did he want to be the Lord of the Rings? Did he want that magical ring? Did he want to turn invisible? Did he want to see behind the Beyond the wall. The more worlds beyond the poles. <laughs> so the Lord of the ice ring will be the Lord of all the land outside the walls, outside the barriers, my naga. Even Thoth, <laughs> the moving island, man. I'm out of here, baby. I appreciate y'all for surfing the wave and continue to get all the drop. In the drop, drop, chatter, chat, to chat, chatter. Because, you know, the house is returning, man. <laughs> Aqua Tide is popping off, man. Nagaville is active, man. Because Naga's Bill and Nagaville. For the tribe, for the whole tribe, for the whole tribe, for the Aquas, for the high Amazon queens, for the heritage. Hey, we did it again, my Naga. Tribe up, stay up, suit up, choose up.